Oh yeah, so yo, there's another episode of the Untold. Got my guys here. Um, one of the guys is a big brother, like a for real big brother to the industry, to all of us. Then I got Mister uh, <laughs> Faith Moves. <laughs> That's what you all know. Man. But listen, we got Maurice Fitzgerald, and we got Derek Swole Ray. What up, my guy? Wow. <laughs> Crazy, right? Listen. These two got like we brothers, like just uh, it's always gonna be some family, a family type situation on this show. But now nah, I felt like Swole's been here, not this setup, but Swole's been here before. And like when I told him you was coming on, it was nothing else to be talked about. Facts. Like, Facts. I don't think nobody loves you more than oh, he does. I, I I would fight anybody <laughs> that would say they did. You know what I mean? Like you don't get me without this guy. No, for wow. sure. I like, get it. You, but you don't. yo, bro, is I'm glad you pulled up. Man, I'm I'm excited to be here. You already know. Yeah. Reese, this is me. I was like definitely. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it definitely. It was no way I could there's certain people I have to have on this situation and like you bro like for real just from me to you you already know where he's at with it but for me to you like bro the the road you paved in music is uh it's kind of unmatched yeah, if we being real. honest yeah. you get what i'm saying you know how you got somebody that you looked up to still do but you get what i'm saying you looked up to them from a distance yeah and then you finally like start rocking with them or whatever the case, you build a relationship, but then you see that's who that person is for real. You get what I'm saying? So, like, I'm one of the ones that's going to tell you. I know he tells you all the time, but we're going to tell you, bro, like, you definitely paved the way when it came to this music thing. So For yeah. so many of us, though. like, And a lot of people ain't going to say it or give yeah. the credit. But it, it, You wouldn't have a lot of guys that's working right now without Maurice. Wow. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys. We, <laughs> we literally watched this guy... And we tried to be him verbatim, but it was it wasn't we weren't good at it. You know what I mean? But what what he's done in the industry is, like you said, is unmatched, bro. Yeah. Literally. So, bro, let me ask you this: You being who you are, knowing what you've done, how did it start? Like, when did you know this is what you wanted to do? One or you know what I'm saying? Like, how did Joe? How was your beginning? Man, my my story is just so crazy, bro. Like. It wasn't carved into, like, I want to start playing bass to be a superstar bass player and make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It didn't come from that. It, it was never that. I was playing drums. I fell in love with music just from listening, just being around my pops, playing old records all the time and wow. just sitting at the crib, six, seven kids in the crib. Daddy was a music guy. He sang. My mama sang at church. My daddy wasn't in church anymore. But he he used to sing in church, but he knew all the R and B, all the rock stuff. He played all the greatest of the funk stuff, and that was my house, just a musical house in the mm -hmm. church. So when I, I made I started playing drums, and then when I got to high school, my freshman year, um, one of those summers, man, I was I told a story to DOA. I was in the alley playing basketball, yeah. I found a little raggedy bass in the trash bin, crazy with two strings on it. <laughs> Took that wow. joint in the crib. It was like, man, dude, I got a bass. Went over to my oldest brother's house that just passed away. He lived down the street here, just got married. He got married in his 20s. I walked around the corner to his crib. He had a Dare's Hope album um, by the Tommies. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, listening to this tape, like, oh, my God. He gave me the tape. I didn't have a bass amp. So back then, I had a tape deck, <laughs> had a turntable, and my daddy gave me two speakers. The old tape decks you can put, it had a mic input. Wow. So you can plug a quarter inch in. <laughs> so I put that tape on, took that two string bass, plugged it up into the stereo, 
and was trying to play all the Steve Huff stuff That's from there. That's crazy. And I was just whoop, 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 yeah, sliding yeah. up. And I had no octaves, no DMG. <laughs> so everything was like whoop, 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 yeah. whoop, 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 whoop. So I learned how to play safe in his arms, you know what I'm saying, over and over. My interpretation of it. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah, my vision sure. to base. So it, when I went back to school after that summer, we're fooling with that bass every day. I would go hoop, come in house, play bass all night. Hoop, play bass. Came back to school that summer. I'm like, yo, they like ready for me to get on the kit and play drums and rock it out in the march band. I'm like, I play bass now. They was like, wow. get out of here. I'm like, I do. <laughs> and we start counting off tunes. I'm like, dang, that nigga can play. You can play. <laughs> How you do that? Right. So my band teacher was like, man, we got to get you in jazz band. Had me reading all the um, jazz books, fake books, and stuff like that, learning how to play jazz and stuff like that. And I went to the choir, the church band, and um, we had a choir at the school. And uh, Darius Brooks used to go to Marshall, so everybody was, we was like, oh, man. It was like, he would come that. up there sometime, you know wow. what I mean? So I was like, he was a superstar. Right. So from that, that's what bass started for me, just being, finding a bass in the alley. And then from that, I just started getting good enough to play at my church. Mm. Start playing at church, and then my church was an apostolic organization, and Dan Willis um, was apostolic. So Dan Willis had, was starting an interracial choir called PLC, and they call him Pac. And he was like, I want to start a choir with like every denomination of people, white, black, Hispanic. And my church got chosen to come be part of this. And so I got in the church van, took my bass. Wow. And it was four bass players, everybody taking turns playing <laughs> songs. So it was that mean? I'm like, dang. <laughs> who who was the bass players? It was you know it was a guy named Eddie Gamboa, an older guy, and some other dude. I can't wow. remember their name. It was That's all older crazy. than me. I was the youngest cat. That's funny. So bro. Darius started coming around teaching songs so they can prepare to try to do a record. And so Darius told him, like, man, you gotta narrow this down to one band. You gotta pick Pick, pick the, you know, it was three yeah. drummers. Yeah, oh, we was just us you. waiting to play. So Too that much ain't work. <laughs> so Dan, Dan Willis said, I, I'm going to let, I like him, and chose me to be the bass player. Wow. The, all the other bass players just took a choir role besides the <laughs> center. <laughs> Stay in the race. They couldn't play bass the morning. That is wild. They stopped being, they was tenors in a choir. The choir role. <laughs> Stay in the race. Come on. <laughs> So they became oh tenors in the choir because they 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 didn't want to they wanted to be part of it. So they right. put their bases up, and they allowed me to be the bass player there. And so we were just rehearsing out in Oakland. I would get in, I wasn't I didn't have a car. I would just go to my church, ride in the van, go to all these rehearsals every Tuesday night, yeah. and was preparing for a record. So I remember one Saturday, um, when they had solidified their deal, they was getting signed to Tosca, and so it was t almost time to start recording. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to play on the record. Right. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Wow. Darius Brooks called a, a mandatory rehearsal on a Saturday. I remember I took the bus over there. And he's just like, all right, let's play the song. Count the song off. Stop. Maurice, <laughs> when last time you changed the strings? Oh, my God. I was like, I ain't got no money. I right. bought them yeah. last week. Damn. Your strings sound terrible. You know what? So you ain't Darius. playing on this record. You so ain't ready. Darius. That's definitely And Darius. Kick Me told me I wasn't playing on the record. Told all of us we wasn't good enough. That broke my heart, bro. I, I, I went home on that little CTA where I had to take the pace first because was, he was over in Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> took the pace down there. Cicero didn't get on it. Were you, got, did you have your bass on your back? I had you? my bass with me. Wow. Yeah, my boy Donzel Holland was with me. This guy named Donzel, he was from Chicago. He was my my dude. He sang in the choir. He was like, it's going to be all right, Reese. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> the extra encouragement you need to keep me. going. So I got to the crib. I told my mom, I was like, yo, it kicked me off the record. I was heartbroken. She said, you know what, baby? I'm going to pray for you. She prophesied it to me in my room. Wow. And laid hands on me, yeah. bro. Told me to go to every rehearsal, regardless if I was playing on the record or not. And that's what I did. And when I got to that rehearsal, he had brought Al, Richard, <laughs> Gibbs, Sanchez, Harley came in to produce Jeez, it. Jeez, Louise. Um... Steve, Steve was from Augusto, Steve, didn't he? Steve wasn't available to play bass, so they brought in Lamar Jones. Was young, wow. but he was he solid. Was season, yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, he was yeah. solid because he was playing with Daniel Weatherspoon, and they had of a course. choir. Yep. Yep. Him to be in. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And uh, so Lamar came in, and man, I.
yeah. looking at the choir, they like, oh my God, everybody getting excited because you got <laughs> yeah. a recording yeah. Yeah. band. And you know, we, we, you know how that is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so I'm like, Oh, I don't have it. Got you. So I went to every rehearsal. I absorbed how they think, how they, I just stuck around there, man. And even through that, Calvin Bridges said, man, look, I want you to play my song. Mm. He had two songs. He told Darius and Sanchez, he playing my songs. And they was, they was, they was fighting against it, but he allowed me to play two songs on that album. That was my first introduction to playing on an album professionally. Yeah. The second year came around to speed it up. They 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 allowed me to play the entire record. And that next year when I played that record, I was ready, was bro. Ready. <laughs> you know, I was ready. I had absorbed all that information on how they did it. I, I just worked hard on it. And that year, Dan Willis invited John P. Key to be the special mm. guest wow. to sing a song with him. So John and his whole choir had did a show that Friday night before and he, they was all sitting in the audience. And John was out there listening to the whole record. And when he came up to the podium and he got ready to leave, he looked down and I said, young man, I've been listening to you play all night. You sound good. Wow. I was a kid. Yeah. I was still in high school. And that's all he said to me. And I was like, wow. Yeah. John P. Key said something. Yeah. To fast forward, a week later, I got home from school. My mom was like, um, a John P. Key <laughs> called here to the house? What? Wow. I hadn't even given my number. He had called around the city and found oh, my number. Crazy. Wow. And called and Jeanette called. And I remember we had a telephone. We had a little notepad. It was a 704 number written on top. <laughs> called John P. Key back. Yeah. And I called and Jeanette once she said, John P. Key was so touched by the way you played that record. He wants you to come to North Carolina and audition for New Life for the choir. They was the biggest choir. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. The time Absolutely. I'm, Bigger I, than Kurt at that time. Yeah, they, he was big. Kurt used to come to John conventions that was trying to get like John. Really? Everybody was trying to be like yeah. John P. Key. Wow. He Definitely. was the king, bro. Yeah. So I seen everybody before they was a artist yeah. come around John and just kind of absorb. And so that what happened was I went, I took my little $400, bought a Greyhound ticket, went down to North Carolina and rehearsed with Michi and Coon wow. for about an hour. And they put me on a bus and we went to New York to Stanley Brown Church to do a concert. Jeff Davis was on drums, oh, Stanley God. Brown. I was scared. I was shaking. Like, <laughs> I'm sure you were. Ooh, 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 what I'm about to do. Yeah. And they threw me out there, man. And that's how I got, that's how it started for me, man. Wow. It was so unintentional. It was me get kicked off a record, my mama praying for me. And that, it just happened that fast. I've only been playing bass like two years when I met wow. John. Wow. So Here's let the, me ask you this. Mm -hmm. In your story, it's two main questions. Mm -hmm. the, one is, what really made you go to those rehearsals even though you got threw off the record? My mama said you should go. But even outside of her, because there's a lot of things our parents told us I, to I do. I wanted to go because I, I wanted to see That's what I, okay. how much better these guys the were was. than me. Gotcha. And what was the difference maker? And boy, did I see. Wow. Just being able to see how guys can take a song that don't have nothing in yeah. the rhythm section mm -hmm. and make it something. Yeah. When you first learn how to play, you learn how you learn how to play other people's stuff. But you like, how did they come up? How with did that? they? How did you make that? And happen? The, how did they yeah. come up with that? Was blowing my mind. Yeah, yeah. the sensitivity the, to knowing, just knowing musically yeah. what to do. What made you think like what that? What made yeah. you do that? Yeah. Facts. How are you doing that? Yeah, that was the the inspiration for me. That's Got what you. I took from that. And that's so, why. I, no, go ahead. Did that change? Did that change? Well, not change. Did that yeah. cause you to start thinking that way? Per record, when you started recording, yeah, there was a moment in time mm -hmm. where in gospel you mm -hmm. were recording everything. Mm -hmm. I remember because I was mm -hmm. taking you to the airport. Mm -hmm. They were holding <laughs> <I> records. <laughs> yeah, they were changing you, the date. Yeah, they would be I like, remember. "Oh, Reese isn't available that weekend. Let's yeah. move the record back." That wasn't happening, man, bro. They were waiting on me. What's your schedule? Yep, facts. I'm, I'm done with this record. Then we're gonna do the record. Then wow, it became like that, bro. I remember, and it wasn't that I was trying to be. An acrobat on bass or trying to be better than a cold than anybody. That wasn't even my heart. Yeah. yeah. I love music and I and I, I had recognized that God was with me and what I was doing. Yeah. And I just felt like this was my season and I was just executing in that moment, man. Man, where are you executing? It was, Jesus. It, was, it was when I look back at it, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my tenure in gospel was much more giant than the secular world. 
I was recording everybody's record, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it was nuts. But the John P. Key camp was the boot camp mm -hmm. that launched me yeah. to even have a mindset of recording and knowing how to do that. John, yeah. I give John so much credit to the bass player I became. Yeah. Just giving me that, that like, that dog, like, you can do it. You cold. Right, he started yeah. telling me at a young age, nigga, I, you got something in you. You special. Wow. Yeah. Go on stage and kill. Yeah. I don't care if we don't do a sound check. Just plug up, play, knock it out. John know definitely what to say. He know we what should to put say, that battery man. on your back. And he, he knew what to say to his band, man. It would be a three-piece, man. Nobody didn't want to fool with us, bro. That's oh, my crazy. God. What? No no Pro Tools, nothing. We just oh, yeah. uh, counted off from that. the dome. Yeah. yeah. Smacking. Yeah. And your tone was killing, too. Like, man. I don't know if it was before John, but once you got to John, mm -hmm. it was like, it was almost like we hadn't heard bass like that because we had mm -hmm. Steve mm -hmm. and you heard those records. Mm -hmm. But once you started recording, mm -hmm. it was like you had took it up a notch. Where'd that come from? Man, it came from old records, bro. Okay. It came from, I was obsessed with Luther Vandross camp. Mm. Oh, yeah. I thought Marcus Melatone was impeccable on records. I thought Nathan Neese had a, a special character in his tone when he played yeah, for sure. Rapture and the, the uh, composition records. So I started getting into so much of the old school records. People don't know they thought I was just just listening to gospel for yeah. my inspiration, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. It was I listened to gospel for to a certain edge of it, but a lot of it was listening to uh, Chuck Rainey on Steely Dan records. Yeah. All the people that my daddy gave me a crate of records, and I'll use that to even teach me how to come up with bass lines. Really, well. and I noticed that I said, "Man, the secular music, the bass lines are carrying the music, mm -hmm. man." Like it's it's carrying, and I and I would listen to Steve, and I was like, dang, wait a minute, he kind of carrying this thing, and then James Jamerson, they was carrying the songs, so I started without knowing that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I was using that inspiration from that. So when John then would give me songs, I, I would sit on my back porch on Jackson Street with rats running up the stairs, <laughs> trying to create a bass line that yeah. would work for show up. Wow, you That's know what I'm crazy. saying? What would work on this song? I came up with that bass line on the back porch on Jackson Street. That's insane. So wait, what did John, what were you playing to? I was, I was just, I knew we, we were saying, that song came from Never Shall Forget. Never Shall Forget. When he's done with me. Oh, yeah, okay. And then he got to the vamp, and he just started singing Show Up. And he told us, we was in California when he did it. He was like, we going to record this when we get back to North Carolina. So we, I was a I went home. And then I just start fooling with what what the vamp gonna be because the vamp was just dun 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 dun. dun, dun. So I just started playing. Dun, 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 yes, sir. <laughs> just rocking that. I, right. I played that for like hours on my porch. Wow. So man, it's simple, but it's sticking. Yeah. yeah. Michi took me in the studio, and I played it. That's what happened. And that's the history of how that happened. <laughs> that, <laughs> be, that's insane. People don't understand. Like, yo, when show up hit. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Now, first of all, I watched the VHS way mm -hmm. too many times. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think they had on the neon jackets. Uh -huh. And I had on a brown vest. Yeah. <laughs> Dog. But it was like you, when Chris was home, bongos. Mm -hmm. so but was. you, Liddell, Ivan, mm -hmm. and was it Eric? Eric Bryce all oh, the time. Wow. Yep. I had just met him. That that was the first time I met Eric Bryce. Really? I was like, it's starstruck. Like, that's the dude that be recording with Fred. And oh. mm. he was the nicest guy. It's like, in that day, man, when you were a young fella, these guys took you in the wing. Like, man, you should do this, do that. Blah, yeah. Blah. yeah. That was Eric Bryce. He was amazing. He didn't even travel with us like that. He just came to do that. John was like, I'm bringing Eric Bryce in. Wow. And Ivan Powell came in because... And Ivan and Liddell ended up there because just the week prior, I mean, I, I say the summer prior, John had just kind of made another move, and and Michi and Coon had went another way. Got you. Okay. Basically, John was like, "Yeah, you know, I, I'm doing this." Um, he told us not to go do this session because they had another gig, and it was just a thing with a book them booking a session, and they missed the gig. But I had told John I was going to do it. So I guess they didn't tell him. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was simple. It was yeah, simple. yeah, yeah. But at the time, you know, he was like, they, everybody just went their own way. And then Coon ended up going with Donald Lawrence. So make a long story short, we met Liddell. We heard him playing with this dude named Earl Bynum in Hampton, Virginia. Liddell was going to college in Hampton. Wow. And, and Virginia. And he was rocking them drums, bro. Smacking the drums. 
So J- Liddell, John made a move, brought Liddell in. I didn't even know he had made the move until I got to rehearsal. And my boy, uh, we call him Race. <laughs> His name Donzel. He's like, you know that guy, Liddell. Race, that's there. the ball here, dude, yeah, right? He's yeah. Like, down there with them gloves <laughs> on them drums. Oh, my God. I was mad. Like, <laughs> I ain't going to like him. Yeah, okay. I just made in my mind I was going to like him because he <laughs> okay. wasn't out the gate. Yeah. So I got to the rehearsal. And I'm like, he's like, what's up? I was like, yeah, what's up? Man? <laughs> <laughs> got an attitude. <laughs> a little attitude, you know. That nigga stopped playing. Oh, yeah, it was, was over. Like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Gave him a hug. And we brothers to this day. Yeah. I mean, he was smacking them drums. Of it course. was just, it was a, 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 a change, a shift in the rhythm section with me and Liddell. I mean, it was great with me and Cone then. I had Liddell, and it was just. It just kept morphing. Yeah, Liddell just brought a different energy. I was yeah. just about to say that. And Ivan Powell used to be um, sitting in, he used to play with his with Hubert Powell. Hubert Powell had the yeah. jazz band and mm-hmm. we knew he on the drums. Ivan played second keys with his brother and he would always be around. And so John was like, hey man, I'm going to bring this cat in. He sing and play. So we get to the airport and Ivan there, I'm like, oh man, he was the coolest brother ever. Yeah, wow, definitely. Smooth. So John, he put us, he had us in North Carolina right before we did that video. And we had a house, one of John houses. He said, y'all going to stay here, live together. I'm going to set up a band. Yeah, the living room was just equipment. He set up a whole little sound thing where, where we just lived together and played and rehearsed together. And we got to know each other. That's and that's how we put that DVD together. Just wow. living in a house together, practicing in a house. <laughs> so that's where the chemistry came. The, and you can hear it. You, could, mm-hmm. you definitely could hear it, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, you could really hear the So... During that time, like the sound you was creating, Mm -hmm. at what point did you know that it was a different type of sound? Because we all come up Mm -hmm. listening to other people, Mm -hmm. of course. But at what point did you know, okay, I have a sound? I knew I had a sound when John introduced me to playing on, he would be producing different people's records. Mm -hmm. He put me on Vanessa Bell Armstrong record. Changed my life. Um, that record that changed man. me for sure. I, man. You played a Warwick on that record. I sure did. Yep, I but remember. it was one before that. Really, it's another record called "The Secret Is Out." Before Vanessa called me back to do that record ah, with Warwick wow. with Gerald Hatton. In. Okay, because that's the record John didn't produce. Gotcha. So Vanessa, you played on "The Secret Is Out." Yeah, it's called "The Secret Is Out." That was um, Vanessa. Wow, Hatton. I didn't know that. Yep, and she did. Um, Jesus Christ! <laughs> so <laughs> John was. Getting me, having me play on all the inner city masks, that stuff. So Vanessa called me and was like, I want you to play on my record. Mm. So during that week, I think I cut Vanessa. <laughs> I cut Marvin. I cut so many people records in between. I remember being at the airport and people sending rental cars. Well, take a rental car and drive to Detroit after you get done. I was just wow. like, dang, this is crazy. Yeah. So that's when the record, that's when I knew I had a sound because it, other people started like, man, come, come do my record. Yeah, and it, it, it it was from that. Got you. So because it like so even it's like hearing your story and yeah. some of that a lot of that I knew, but hearing your story like you looking at those guys mm-hmm. that you look because it's like when the big dogs come in for the records, mm-hmm. it immediately takes me to a place. I'm not a hater, but I just be like, well, we could have played right, mm-hmm. yeah, but I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Your ego get in the way. Yeah, it's like sure. it's like okay, let's be mm-hmm. real. But like you immediately mm-hmm. became that guy that comes mm-hmm. in. You know how the band come in the last oh, week. Oh yeah, for sure. The mm-hmm. choir's energy, yeah, right. Goes everything up. goes up. Yeah, everything everything changes, man. It's yeah. like you walk in a room and plug up, and they like, oh, we haven't heard our song. We haven't like heard these songs. And like the that. regular yeah. musicians, not yeah. regular, but they look at like I've been but playing you know this what? drum set for yeah. two. <laughs> but what what end up happening like? Like I had a one record in DC. Big Mike brought me in this record called New Samaritan. They, they hired oh me yeah, I remember those records. To come in, and they had a band. They had two bands. They had my man Isaiah had his band from DC, and they had us. And they was like, "Why they need? Why they need these guys?" Yeah. And so we got in and we started playing. It was like, "Oh wow!" Yeah, the record <laughs> almost right. wasn't even even. Like yeah, it, yeah. it was a different sound. Right. And even other guys like the bass player, he was like. He was holding his head down a little bit. I was like, yo, man, you sound great. Right. Like, it became an encouraging thing. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you know I, mean? I was Should in that be. seat before. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it wasn't like I was carrying an air about, like, I'm about to come in and blaze this record. I, that's what I, I was. That's who you are. That, that's who I am. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it became an encouraging other cats that was sitting at home, and they played for their local choirs, and then they got the big cat come in and play. Right. So hopefully you take something from this, because yeah. I mm-hmm. did 
You know what I mean? Same Everybody thing. Everybody don't. Rodney same Bryan thing happened to me. <laughs> same Rodney thing Bryan happened to me. the same way. Really? Donald, the first Rodney Bryan, I played on two of his records. The first one was Donald Lawrence. This one, everybody was, I, I got a call from Donald. He's like, Mel Gray can't do it. Mm. Donald wants you to play this Rodney Bryan record. And I wow. remember um, driving up, me and Daniel Weatherspoon from Chicago up to Indianapolis. Me, him, Cedric, and Coon, we cut that record. And um, that that's when I started hearing, like, it was a different sound the way Donald played. Yeah. And them guys, Cedric, them, and the, the big chords. Yeah. And playing the solid bass and being there when they dropped. It was a whole another vibe. So that was another notch in my belt, learning how to record with different people and different mindsets right. and approaches to bass. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. And then Kevin Bond started calling. I was just about to ask you that. How Man. did how did Kevin Man. find you? Like, how did that happen? Kevin, when the strength record came out, he was like... Speaking of strength, uh-huh. let me say this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was just telling so all this. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's this thing you did on strength. Mm-hmm. It's the octave thing. <laughs> so then we get to the Kevin Bar- Where did that start? Because you know what I'm talking about? It's the boom. It bam. was. Because they was, they was doing talk box on that, on that song. Yeah. Talk box. I was doing talk. Oh, I know that whole I video. Was, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was something, it was something I heard the good guitar players do. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, bam. Yeah, yeah, bam. yeah, yeah. And, I, and that, he started doing that. And I just stopped messing around with that in sound check. And they was like, dude, of course. do that. Yeah. You keep have that. to do that. You have to keep that. And yeah. I just started doing it. And I was like, wow. I was just something I was just messing and around with. And it spoke with. so clearly on the and record. It was, it was, and that bass. Dog, it was so loud. You I changed was, the game with that, that Fender on talking, it. Man. I don't. I don't think people give you credit for that. Man. There was nobody playing a Fender that sounded that good. I got to give you the story on that Fender. How Please. did that happen? I was playing a, a war against. Yeah, I remember. Because John, you playing John bought then? that war yeah, before, before Destiny's Child. Yeah, I before was, all I of the stuff that, got, yeah. I had a I war had no back clue. then. Oh, wow. They had one up in the music store in, in North Carolina. And I had a um, I had a Sadowski bass I was playing. Um, that was after. But that Warwick bass, I had put that Padula down. And John bought me that Warwick bass. John Piki bought me that bass. And and it was different because it had a one pickup. Yeah, one pickup. Was yeah. it like natural? It was a natural color. I, yep. I remember, dog. One listen. Pickup, I was like, <laughs> I got to get it. I'm going to make this a sound in gospel. Yeah. I made that bass. Kind of, I found my slap tone yeah. on it. I found my finger tone on it. And it was almost it was almost a cross between a music man, yep. but a little bit of a jazz, mm-hmm. a little bit. So it was a cross. Mm-hmm. But I came home um, from being out with John and, and Byron. He used to work at that guitar center. Yeah. Like, Hey man, oh, Byron with the <laughs> man, that's a new bass up here by Fender. You gotta come up here and bring that Warwick with you. Really? And I brought that Warwick and I traded him in for that blue Fender right off the wall at Guitar Center on Cicero. Even Trey? Even Trey. I ain't wow. even had to put a nickel for it. And I brought, I br- came and I brought, came back on the road, and that bass was just it was smacking. singing. Yo, Jesus it Christ! It was just it, I ain't do no, I ain't add no preamp. I ain't do really? nothing to it. I just got a setup and took it out there, and that bass started banging. All I've over never the heard show. a bass sound that good since then. It yeah. was no, ridiculous. That bass was different. It was so, and it changed got the sound. And everybody and went and got the whole Fender entire Fender. Fender. Right. gospel because, industry. Because everybody. you gotta understand that it gospel rec, um, bass players started morphing to Ken Smith yep. and Tobias. Yep, absolutely. Steve was playing Tobias. Yep. Goucher was playing Tobias mm-hmm. and stuff. So they, it was a shift in that. Everybody wanted the bright. Strong bass, mid tone with yep. brightness and punching through, and those Tobiasons and Ken Smiths, those were the bass. I couldn't afford those kind of bass. Right, right. Yeah. So I was like, man, I'm gonna make my own sound yeah, yeah. with what I got. And boy, did you make a sound? You know what I mean? And Jesus that was yeah. that. Christ. That so okay. So well, I never knew that. So me and Kevin Bond heard mm-hmm. that lick, and then mm-hmm. Kevin called you. <laughs> <laughs> me and Kevin, you was with Kevin at the time. I mean, me, hey. we linked late. We linked. Let, let me tell you the how you how me idiot, and Kevin man. Bond. We I met him because he was you dumb, <laughs> so dumb. He was playing with um with Tri City. He it was oh, the band oh, yeah, then yeah, was okay. Mel Gray, um Jer um Jeremy, Jeremy Haynes. Yeah. Wait, Donald's Tri City? Yeah, Kevin Bond put. Bible Stories to, record yeah, was produced Kevin. by Kevin With Bond that big and, computer sitting next and to Donald. Him. Donald's first record was Kevin Bond. I am God. I don't know why I don't remember that. That's him and Cedric. I, I did yeah, not know I'm, that. Cedric oh on organ. God. That's him and Mel Gray. 
And, Who is cold? Oh, Mel is. Oh, he was super cold. Super yeah. cold on bass. That Definitely. was that's a bass player. Yeah, yeah, dude. for sure. So I was man. That was one of my inspirations too. Yeah. Listening to him playing on Chris Gray, his his um mm-hmm. his uh, cousins' records and stuff. They was killing. So I would see them in the road on the road and all yeah. that stuff like that. But when I started recording, and, and I remember Kevin said, "Man, yo, money you sound good <laughs> on strength. <laughs> you giving him a new sound. Wow. I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna be in touch. Like, yeah." <laughs> I'll be in touch. That's but Kevin for sure. I was oh, like, yeah. that's Kevin. So, man, he called me. The first record he called me for was Jackie McCullough. Live in Jamaica. Um, we was in Jamaica. Really? Jackie McCullough was a she was a preacher, but she had great songs and she had brought in the family. Tamla Man. That's and not her the husband, stay connected, the right? Whole, is it? Yes, stay connected, wow. all that stuff. You remember that too? Yes, that sure. record Cold Blooded. Oh my God. Me, Jason White. <laughs> Jason Al was, Willis. Yes, sir. Jeremy Haynes. What? Yep. I remember and that that's, record. That's how we, that's my first record with him. And I remember I almost messed up the relationship with him because I was so busy doing so many other records mm. and he had sent pre production tapes and said, You didn't learn. Come it. down here and we're going to go over the stuff. I got there. He counted off. I, I'm like, Give me a minute. He said, Wait a minute, money. <laughs> I took the time to yeah. cut these tracks and send them to you. You show up knowing my music. Matter of fact, you show up knowing everybody's music. Wow. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I, I got it. I don't care how busy you are. Don't take the assignment yeah. if you're not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. That's Kevin. And so, man, I got in that room. No, wasn't no going to bed for me. Oh, no, yeah. not at all. I stayed up all night so I can at least have the first three, four songs yeah, and yeah. knock them out. Yeah. I showed up in the rehearsal. I was knocking them down. That's what I'm talking about, money. That's what he said. Yeah. And he ain't nobody ever had to tell me that again. In life. I was just about to say that. Did ever, that shit for you? Price. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Did, did. Because not being prepared means you whack. Facts. So that's so. Let me yeah. ask you this yeah. because mm-hmm. we always talk about this. You're the one guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure there's others mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. We don't. You're know. the yeah. You're mm-hmm. the one guy. You literally prepare now. Yeah, like you did. So is that mm-hmm. the moment where you started preparing like that? I was all. I was. I was preparing, but. I was letting my schedule get the best of me and uh, I, taking the assignment. Yeah, and yeah. I see what you don't want to turn that down. Uh, and he said, don't take the assignment yeah. if you can't do the work. Facts. Yeah. So it made me lock in on it like, I don't care. If yeah. I can't lock into this music, I ain't, I can't go do it. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted I didn't want to miss a moment. And so when you you miss moments musically where you trying to add to the songs mm-hmm. if you don't know the meat of the yeah, song. Yeah, for sure. So he trying to create and I, he calling notes. He said, I'm not going to call notes out to you. Right. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I gave you the music. Yeah. And and that's and that stuck far with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're right. He only said that one time. He never had to say it to me in life again. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. after that happened, knocked that record out. He said, Oh man, you on my team. I started doing all kind of records with him. Then we started doing the T D Jakes records. I remember that record. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. started knocking them out. Then he was like, Kirk Carr had just bid that big big record with every mountain with Joe Smith. Yep. I had no I I would have never thought in a million years yeah. I would be the next bass player to play yeah. that record. Kirk Carr called me. I had just, I was living in Hyde Park. I remember Hyde Park. I just got Park. married. Yep. He called me like, hi, this is Kirk Carr. <laughs> I was like, How did he Kirk? say it? Hi, this is Kirk Carr. <laughs> I was like, Kirk Carr. He said, Jason, them gave me your number. I want you to do my record. We're doing the second record. So you didn't go through Kevin. Mm-mm. They just, really? They just gave, he, man, them guys that putting their records together, they were very hands on yeah. who they picked. And Kirk was one of the guys who just kind of he hit, took a recommendation. Wow. Jason White and Kevin Bond was like, "You want that cat?" Yeah, yeah. And he called me, and then that was like he was like, "How, how much you gonna need for this record?" I'm like, "I don't know." He was like, "At back this was back then, like it's thirty five hundred, okay?" Wow. I'm like, "Yeah, like, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that's for a lot sure. of money for back then." Yeah, for like, sure. I'm like, "Man, thirty five for records? Okay, cool." Of course, it went up for me. Yeah, but that was that was good. Plus per diem and all expenses. Oh, I'm like, yeah. That's good back then. That was the uh, I Will Bless the Lord was that's, on uh, that. Yep, and all that stuff. When, um, that's um, uh, Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, man. You and Jeremy Haynes had a different type of lock. Yeah, it was That's different. the thing. with you. It's like mm-hmm. you could lock with mm-hmm. any bass player, mm-hmm. but never lose your sound. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. And for a recording bass mm-hmm. player, that's mm-hmm. not always easy. Yeah. Man, it's, it's almost like. Like when I would hear Nathan East play with different guys, yep. to him with Ricky mm-hmm. yeah. Lawson, I would hear him with different other cats and with Steve from Rome. It just brought – drummers should always make a bass player speak different. You notice how you play gotcha. different with different yeah, drummers? Yeah, for sure, 1,000%. I, the drummer 
absolutely matters to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's how we gonna yeah. talk and how we speak. I speak with Calvin differently than I speak with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. You know what I mean? I speak differently with different drummers, like, you know what I mean? But that's why it's hard for me to play with a drummer who don't think nowhere near like none of us think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't, can't speak. Really do if, it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Some guys I don't I don't play randomly. I don't waste notes. Mm. And guys who I've waste notes that, yeah. that don't yeah. That don't work for me, yeah. bro. Like, why are you playing that? Why, and what that didn't even like, make you sense. Mean why, anything why are you doing that? Yeah. Why, are you, why are you crashing right there for right. what? That's what I was about to say. Some guys are so used to, or whatever, mm -hmm. musicians are used to being themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't deviate from right. that. Yep. It's like, yeah. no, who you are over there ain't going to work over here. It ain't going to exactly. work over here. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So but you got to know the difference, too. You got to know when to be mm -hmm. yourself and how much of yourself to put yeah. in the situation. Exactly. Absolutely. For sure. Exactly. Because they calling you for you. Yeah, exactly. for sure. But you definitely got to play the music that they're calling you <laughs> As for. As is. Yeah, for sure. And man, so to the, back to the session thing, and just look up, and every producer is I listen to everybody else's work. Yeah. And they listen to the people who they hire. Like, man, who they? Man, they call Reese to do that, man. Come do my something. Right, right, right. He gets it. Producers love musicians who come in and can translate. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know that. Yep, for sure. You know, when Aaron calling you, he calling you because you, he know when he lays something out, you're going to translate yeah. that music and be part of it. Right. And they, and they can get along with you. Got to be nice. People love people they can yep. get along That's with. That's a too. fact. It makes yeah. the music sound better, yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so many, I got so many stories. I can be talking for hours on how things came about. It's just crazy. So, e even that Kurt Carr mm -hmm. record, excuse me, mm -hmm. the sound of it even changed because mm -hmm. Kevin, like how he arranged mm -hmm. those songs, mm -hmm gave you space to be Reese. It was yeah, almost oh, like mm -hmm. it was almost like he produced that record mm -hmm. so he can say, hey, here's mm -hmm. my Reese. But you had already right. been recording, mm -hmm. but that record was mm -hmm. different. It was different. It was different. You stuck out. It was mm -hmm. literally like they mixed you on top of everybody <laughs> wow. else. But it was the sound of your bass too. Yeah. Wow. But you know what I was thinking about a lot? I was thinking about Joel. How did Joel approach the record before mm. and they was like don't be joe don't, don't be you Charlie. can't you can't mm -hmm. yeah be you, we you it would have been be a disservice yeah. yeah and so you know people like sanctuary that's a lot of space if you a busy bass player you could have played a lot of it, you could have been so over the place but you know what i place. thought about when i heard that stuff i thought about the way uk music sounded like mm. like sting or right like the talking heads don't yeah i thought about every time i do a record I get in the crates, man. I listen to music genres mm, and yeah. see what fit. Right. And that's what made that stick out. Just like they play simple, they played a part, and it made you dance. Yeah. That's Parts, scary. Bass players made you dance yeah. on records back then. Mm -hmm. It was about the groove. Right, like, right. Ooh. And you remember the bass lines years to come. Man. Like you hear Sanctuary now, you hear it. You're like, yeah. oh, I, it's I still agree. relevant. Yeah. yeah. You always play, to me, you always play stuff that's gonna be here when you're not here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't waste randomness when I record. I'm like, this is purposeful. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the mindset. Yeah. Even live, I'm like, this has gotta feel, it's gotta feel you gotta good. make the audience yeah. feel a certain yeah. way. Yeah. Cause they don't know the notes that you playing. They, they could care less about those busy, notes. Especially in arenas. Yeah, don't, don't translate. It don't translate. No. When you play solid and yep. strong with tone, you can engineers love it. People yep. feel it. It's a different thing. Yeah, they you know can. I mean? If you're not playing with feel, mm -hmm. I'd rather not even rock with you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I agree. Because you're exactly. playing for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> basically. Yeah, exactly. Like somebody sent me a message the other day. Like, um, yeah, this drummer I know or I work with, whatever. He doesn't play with feel. Like, what mm -hmm. advice would you give him? Mm -hmm. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I told them, I said, tell them to internalize the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And almost put that back out. Yes. Yep. Start from there. If a song feels good, mm -hmm. match that feeling. Right, exactly. right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But some people are so mm -hmm. locked into, like I said, pushing them. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the sound that's yeah. already there. Yeah. And that's where you took your sound to every mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. but you made every situation work for that situation. Right. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think we in a world now like people that play instruments, are almost forgetting the purpose mm -hmm. of what we do. Yeah, the mm -hmm. purpose of your instrument. Yeah, yeah, and the purpose of what we serve in the song. Like when I listen to records and I listen to stuff that inspired me, the bass player. It's like he killing, yeah. But he's he's serving a role, and yep. it's so unselfish. Mm -hmm. 
it's like you can tell like it's like every musician was a producer they played with intent not to run into nobody right, else right to make that thing just be to lift yeah and a lot of time it's so much information out here all at once to these cats that they see on the internet it's yeah. so many bad cats that they think what they hear and see that means you just play that jump right. every time you send out a yeah. play you just yeah. you just serve you right yeah. and that's not music bro it's not yeah. it's not you might be great at executing on an instrument but that don't mean you're a musician right that's right yeah yeah I agree 1000%. Mm-hmm. So and many I ain't guys. Hating on nobody. I no, love, no, it, it's, it's the truth. I love this stuff. It's, some yeah. of it is inspiring. But but the real, when you go out on the road and tour with Justin Timberlake, man, he you got to be a bass player. You got to play his music the yeah, way they his wrote music it. Like the producers made man, it. Mm-hmm. I remember my first time playing mm-hmm. with Mary, mm-hmm. we was playing Happy. Mm-hmm. And it's literally a, a, mm-hmm. a sample. But I was playing all over this song. And Valdez Curtis pulled Mayfield. me to the side. He's like, man, they're going to fire you, bro. You got to play the music exactly like that. Mm-hmm. Play it with your feel, mm-hmm. but you got to play the right notes. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. play the notes you want to mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. And that that stuck with me. But mm-hmm. then I also thought back to when I was mm-hmm. sitting around you mm-hmm. and how you would literally learn this music. Mm-hmm. And you you played it the same time, mm-hmm. every, the same way every mm-hmm. single time. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of guys, that that's a lost art at mm-hmm. this point. Nobody mm-hmm. cares about that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even. That was, I'm glad you brought that up. Because like going... When you move to the Sweet Holy albums, right? Man. So <laughs> I tell Calvin mm-hmm. this all the time. Mm-hmm. The Cal- the so- the album, I should say, mm-hmm. that changed it for Calvin, mm-hmm. for me, and mm-hmm. for him, he'll mm-hmm. say it, yeah. mm-hmm. was when y'all did the Sweet Holy album, but at the old church. The Red Church. With Higher. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's when you mm-hmm. and him found, oh, believe me, I know the history. Oh, you, was, you was there, I remember that. <laughs> Listen, I played for Praise yeah. and Worship. Yeah, I remember you being there. Calvin had locked mm-hmm. me. I was like his mm-hmm. opener. Oh, mm-hmm. So, like, even <laughs> when he mean, did. It was the opener. <laughs> yeah, so, like, even when <laughs> he did the idiot. Holy Place <gasps> album, I, w- I was playing with Darius that mm-hmm. night. But Ricky was recording at Monument. So you went and did Praise and Worship. I went and did Praise and Worship, then bounced and played with Darius wow. and came back. Wow. I, I, listen, I, whatever it took to be, but to mm-hmm. say the least, when y'all cut that record at the Red Church, bro, the type of lock you and him, mm-hmm. something from the, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how mm-hmm. much you all played before, mm-hmm. whatever the case was, but mm-hmm. that particular record, mm-hmm. how did that feel to you? Like, even listening back mm-hmm. now, like, I listen to that record mm-hmm. today. And it's still relevant. It's still, the lock is still. Yeah. It don't sound dated. It sounds like not at all because it was based on. Like I, I got to know Calvin then, and Calvin had a lot of respect for me because I was doing it. Right, out there. right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he was, it was like you, you the guy out there. Yeah, right? I had got a wealth of information, and so when I came in, I was ready. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I, was, I felt, <laughs> let's do this. Right. Yeah. So we talked a lot. Man, him just had a lot of conversations and rehearsals. So like, hey, wait a minute, hold up. I'm here. You you with me? Yeah. Wow. Like we we talked about the space. Mm-hmm. We talked about what not to play. It was a lot of conversations. And Daniel Weatherspoon to me was light years ahead of oh, us. Oh, for musically. sure. Yeah. Oh, man. And I felt like he was Joe Sample. He he had a lot of different yeah. records. Like we would talk about records to listen to. Like, man, you heard that record? We talking about different records and different yeah. genres. And that made the lock and it made the communication musically just be like click. Wow, yeah. the, the just the minds in the in the room, and then the respect Calvin had for me in the rhythm section, and I had respect for him as yeah, a young sure. drummer, absolutely, because he was open and willing to lock with me. He yeah. wanted to, he wanted to be. We were trying to build something, and it was like there was no egos in that, right? Yeah, not at all. You know what I mean? Like, let's make this music feel good. We we fans of the Tommies, we fans of what they set in Chicago. This is our let's, this let's is start our Tommy's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet Holy movement. Right, right, and right. it became a movement. Oh bro. man, for sure. All 1000%. over the world. Man, I remember when I was out with Destiny Child when I did start playing pop music. Dude, I got to London. At the bottom of the stage, I walk out of the stage, this dude would say, Money's for Joe, sweet on the spinach. I was like, dude, we about to play independent woman. What you talking about? The Lord is missing me. I was like, dude, they they listening to this stuff. Why anywhere. is it this voice? Though? <laughs> yeah, so that's something translating all over yeah. the world, man. That's for real. <laughs> when I when I walked into Mary's rehearsal, my mm-hmm. first rehearsal, that's what Gerald and Lauren was talking about. Wow. The, the Sweet, Holy, Sweet Holy Spirit right there. What? Now. That's the wow. first thing they talked to me about. Wow. Calvin and Maurice. Wow. 
Wow. Reese, it was um, dog. I was sitting on that front row, like dog. These are grown men. Yeah, man, dude, it was crazy. I had that blue bass on that record too. I wasn't around then. Oh my god, you wasn't? Man. Not the first Sweet Holy record, nah. Hey man, it was so funny, man. Like, there's a dude named Tim Stratton. It was Kim Stratton's husband. He played a very influ- um big role influencing me musically. He was the guy who started showing me scales and mm, all kind oh. of stuff doing that transition to playing bass. He was the bass player at my at the Apostolic Church. And that was his first time like coming out to see me play after wow. I had went out with John. And he sat right on that bench and was crying the whole time. I'm like sure. A baby. Yeah. Wow. And I said, man, what's wrong? He said, you yeah, because yeah. it's it was life life changing, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, and to see my sensei crying like yeah. that, I say, God, yeah. you good? Because he he just felt like I could I didn't teach you that. Yeah, like, where you get that yeah. from? But you took what he gave you. You know what I'm saying? With it. Yeah, he you was built crying. On it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And that's when music is like music, man. It's supposed to be inspiring the next generation. Yeah, for sure. Because I was inspired that way. I was crying and watching people. More, like Pernell Johnson had me crying at the third Sunday musical. I went there looking for Steve. Really? This one I was just trying to get into it. That joker was on that bass, man. Pernell was blazing. Yeah. Little Tony yeah. Russell was my Pernell. That I, I Dude, on the West I Side one you. time. He was playing with his mom, Angie Spivy. He was killing one. Man, I had never heard bass like this before. <laughs> Not and, and Tony was right. Tony's only two years mm-hmm. older than me. Mm-hmm. Seemed like he's and so, he walked yeah. in. I was like, what? Who is that? And this boy plugged that bass up. He was mortified. I was I was sitting there in tears. Michael Lawrence wow. can tell you I was literally sitting there in tears. Like I ain't never heard bass like that wow. before. I Not know. live. I know. And I'm like I want to do. I want to sound like that. That's you never get to Tony's point, nah, but it's like it's like you have how, those people man? that do that to you for man. real. Pernell did that to me. I was like Pernell Johns. He had a four string Fender Jazz. Mm. He had it, two big old PA speakers Jesus man Christ. with horns. I ain't never heard, never heard no bass bite like that. Like, <laughs> what? Ow! Yeah. Man, he killed me. I went home crying. Mama, I'm be like that. Yeah, for real. If it, when somebody makes mm-hmm. you feel that musically, yeah. that's it's a, another, it touched you uh, in a different place. Yeah, yeah. it do. Yeah. It it's you. another level of appreciation. It for is, sure. Man. Yeah. It is, man. I, man, I just remember so many, being at St. James, I remember one time in particular, I came in, we was playing something, we was playing, and the drums and the bass was over in that corner. Mm-hmm. And I just made up some bass lines that on top of this song, and Swole, you were sitting there like, "Yep." I sat why there did many. You play that? Why did you play? Tell why me why you played those what notes. Did you play? Yep. That? I would ask those. Remember questions. you would ask Man, me that. I would ask you that this, all the this, time. This boy would come to yep. my house in Calumet City, and just literally just go downstairs and play bass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was. I'm we all upstairs. upstairs. Him and Lisa upstairs he watching just TV. There, bro. Yeah, all the time. I wanted, I wanted the information, dude. He was, dude. This dude put the work in, bro. Yep. Oh yeah. I would, I, I would. couldn't keep him away from. No, him. no. I didn't try to either. No, that, and that's he what I knew. You definitely yeah. didn't. Yeah, you definitely sure. didn't try to keep, because you. It could be irritating. Yep. You know what I mean? But it was never that. Yeah. yeah. I gave you words to play. Man, take this bass. Yeah. Play this bass. For for months. Though. Right. Right. For take months this. at a time. Like like. You, this your, this you change me, bro. I I, yeah. I know you understand it because that's mm-hmm. what Buddy did for you. But f- what you mm-hmm. did for me, mm-hmm. you made me see that it was possible. Mm-hmm. I remember like the Reed Temple record mm-hmm. that you recorded. I mm-hmm. drove from the west side to your oh, house. I forgot about that. I loaded your, your stuff in your truck, followed <laughs> wow. you to the church, unloaded your stuff, set your, your rig and stuff up, tuned your guitars, and I sat there and I watched you record that record. Wow. And I was like, I don't know how he does. And you had just recorded yep. another record the week before. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how is this dude remembering all of this music? Because when I first started, mm-hmm. retention was mm-hmm. a problem for me. Mm-hmm. I, I had a real problem. Rex used wow. to be like, bro, you got to remember the music. Yeah. But I would watch you record these songs. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how did you remember all of this music? Man, retention became at home, work at home, man. Mm-hmm. Like It was like. I learned that you know, after. People, it's bass players walking around. They, they they cool. Yeah. But when they mm-hmm. when they go, you, but you cool. You walking around. But are you are you working on this when you yep. get home? You Absolutely. Yeah. I don't at this age. I'm 50 years old. If I got to go play a gig, I'm in the crib. I I'm know. Practicing. Yep. I already know. <laughs> I don't go nowhere not without not knowing the music. Over the music. Bro. And I got that from you. I can't I do did. it. Yeah. I don't want to do yeah. it. Yeah. It's crazy I, to do that. I don't want to miss the moment. Yeah. I want to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to be I mean? free. I want to be free. Yeah. I want to buy B flat. Yeah, <laughs> see shot. Go to the five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like yeah, that for yeah. sure. I hate it. I detest that. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. 
Yeah, so. you 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 changed me. Like like he said, mm-hmm. man, I would I would be at your at your house literally in the basement because I didn't have gear. Man. I would be down there for hours. Even when you was out of town, mm-hmm. you call Lisa. Hey, Lisa, yeah, swole on his way. He on, he <laughs> and I'd be down in Let that basement. Let him get that rig. Let him do whatever. Man, you know I what used saying? to. I learned that Destiny's Child show backwards man, and forwards because I wanted crazy. it. I wanted That's a it. That's different. Bro. Le- people don't. That type of respect, yeah, because the respect he had for you, of course, that's mm-hmm. that's the respect I have for Cal. Yeah, mm-hmm. y'all fools was playing at Christ Universal, mm-hmm. and that was I know that was Kevin Randolph's first gig with mm-hmm. John because mm-hmm. yep. his hand was broke. Yep. Mm-hmm. He was talking about it, but mm-hmm. I had Calvin Snare the whole day. Wow. He was like, yeah, just meet me at Soul. Wow. People was asking me at church what I had. I was like, well, we had Christ Universal <laughs> right, with right, John. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I meant was we as in me and the snare had right. to meet wow. it. But like to seriously, like to be in those moments and to be on the outside yeah. looking mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. like dog, the way y'all moved, it was just like dog, these dudes, y'all moved as if y'all really knew what y'all was doing. Oh, I mean, y'all sure. did, but you yeah. get what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. a difference between mm-hmm. an arrogance, but then mm-hmm. a cocky, mm-hmm. you know, but y'all had this confidence like, yeah. no, this is what we do. This is what we do, mm-hmm. and it we was, know what we doing. And like, we about mm-hmm. to show y'all we know what we doing. Y'all, life. y'all playing for Kim Burrell at the Gospel Fest. I remember he was there. You had on, I think, did you have on overalls? <laughs> he definitely, it, it was the same year John played. He definitely had on overalls because I went me, that Monday to Old and Navy and got overalls. I said, Swole, are you kidding me? He was like, dog, Reese My, had my Reese just had on overalls. I said, you know what? I Man. can't. That's the year Calvin played with Ricky. And they had on the own. Oh, yeah. That whole day yep. was like a. Bro, I remember just Holly never walking off the stage. Yeah, you were yeah. there the whole time. Like, I was playing for everybody, yep. bro. Reese, that, but you got to think, those were goals. Yeah. To for us. us, yep, for mm-hmm. sure. To just play on the Patron, mm-hmm. and you were there the entire day. Yeah. Man, yeah. Like, was... those, like, people don't like, I really take, I take those mm-hmm. milestones serious. For sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care what we've done. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever you look at certain places in music. Yeah. Certain eras we was in. Mm-hmm. It's like to come down to the gospel fest yeah. and know you was about to play on that stage. For sure. It, it meant something. Dude, imagine I'm 18, bro. The first time I played with John at the gospel fest. He wow. Was the biggest ever. Yeah. No, I had told my friends in high school, I play for John. It was like, no, you don't. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Wasn't no social media. Yeah, Wasn't no way yeah. to really tell. Yeah. I, it's all you had to show them. Bro, I walked out on that stage. We closed at the old Petrello stage. Yeah. Yeah. And we walked out in there, me, Lowell, Isaac, yep. all us, man. We was hitting that junk. People like, Chris, yep. a sea of people <laughs> screaming my name. Yep. Oh, that's my race. Yep. We know him. Because that was our like, first bro, time seeing you. Yeah. And, bro, yes. I'm, I was so nervous. I'm and sure. But, of but when I counted that stuff off with Coon and and, and I knew my my dude, Michi, you know, it's like, well, let's kill it. Yep. And, bro, I just. I just I blanked out. Yeah. It was just like it was on the it was on the radio. Remember they would have oh, it. Oh yeah, they for would sure. broadcast yeah. live, yep. so people had tapes of it. Yep. Like wow. whoa, it was a mo- a historic moment. Those are the moments I think about. Wow, dude, I'm I'm a West Sider yep. from nothing. Yeah, oh, and God, wow. you got me here. Wow, I ain't try to get here like yeah. mm-hmm. over playing and trying to outdo nobody. You move, you, you, my mama lay hands on me, and all of a sudden, I'm like, Pam. Wow. I cry to this day, man. So forgive me, man. Oh, nah, you nah, good, man, bro. Please. I was inspired by somebody, by people, and I just let God just allow me to be a vessel to do yeah. that. And then I look up, and people just like, man, I play bass because of you. For sure. All over the world. They inbox me now, and people are like, I started playing because yep. I saw Strength and I saw you on Kim Burrell yep. and all this stuff like that. And it's like, we got to realize, man, this stuff that God gave us, this ain't even ours. This is something he gave us. Yeah. And we can't get yeah. cocky about it. It ain't even about that. Yeah. And and we not. We not cocky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm just saying, I just, I get teary-eyed when I think about all those moments, man. So many of them. Man, playing with Mighty Clouds of Joy and the wine is Crazy. <laughs> I recorded so... with everybody, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were calling me. Yeah. The Sanchez that kicked me off a record was like, you one of my favorite bass players. Crazy. Anthony Harmon used to be his yeah. choice. Yeah. Like, Dude, you and Anthony, Anthony's gone. I love your song. Yeah, yeah. I like the way you think. Like, producers like Mano. Like, I met Mano. He was my roommate with Fred. Wow. Fred brought out another keyboard player, and I get to the room, and he's like, 
this, this little dude with a turtleneck on in, <laughs> in the summertime with some black shoes. Like, nigga, where, where your T-shirt? We for the play outdoors in Virginia. It's hot outside. Who is this clown? Like, like dude. And he like, my roommate. Turtleneck. Not knowing that, that we was going to create yeah. Andre man, Crouch's man, library. So dope, listen, we finna record Israel Holden's yep. Christmas and do time. Jonathan Butler. Crazy. Through him sharing a room with me. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Like, he put me on Sheila E's record. He introduced me to some people. He put me with um, Gerald Albright. Put me on all them jazz records and all kind of stuff. Introduced me to Russell Ferrante and all them different people yeah. through just him being my roommate. Yeah. And we just tracking and working on music together. Crazy. You know what I mean? Just relationships happen like that. And that's how I would get on different records, too. Just like people hearing me and just, just by happenstance like that. It was crazy. Man, God placed you strategically in the mm -hmm. place and time mm -hmm. that so many of us were touched by what you did. Like, had you not mm -hmm. honed in on your talent, mm -hmm. where would I be? Wow. You know what I mean? Had you wow. not took the time to say, I want to be the best at what I do. I, I at least mm -hmm. want to know the music going to rehearsal. Right, exactly. I wouldn't be doing that. I do that wow. to this day, bro. Like, if I got to wow. sit up all night and learn these songs, <laughs> I'm going to do that because I'm not going to nobody's rehearsal That's not knowing the music. So just the impact you've had on us, bro, it's, oh, wow. it's so massive. And like I said in the beginning, a lot of people ain't going to say it. You've wow. impacted the music culture, bro. They, they're wow. so In every state in this country, there's a guy that wanted to be Maurice. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if 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 we goal. send out a, a mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. post and say, mm -hmm. tell us what Maurice means to you, mm -hmm. ain't no telling how many posts we'll get, bro. That's, that's how amazing. that's how influential you are to the music industry, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. So, bro, bro, I look at, yeah, seriously. I'm real quick on that subject. Man, I look at, I saw how your career just started doing what it's doing. Crazy. And the favor guy and the tours you were doing. And I would be crying and ha with joy. Yeah. Because you're a product of me. Man, wouldn't be no me without you, bro. And he didn't call me from major situations like, I love you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Facts. He's always done that. The moment when I got a text from Adam Blackstone. Yep. Saying, that dude love you, bro. You inspired me, yep. man. I love you, bro. Mm -hmm. Keep your head up. You one of the dudes that, For that sure. made me want to play. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Let me. Jamario from I'm telling Bruno you, Mars, Bruno, Bruno, yeah, texting me, bro, dude, you the you the goat, yeah, Thank because you. you are, bro. Like I don't yeah. think you, you know really saying? understand these big guys, man. Yeah. And I'm like, it's it's mortifying. Yeah, no, I, you don't. I get it. I you totally don't. get it. <laughs> like your your emotions mm -hmm. come through your plan. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who and it don't matter what mm -hmm. situation you in. Mm -hmm. I done been with you on a few different situations. Mm -hmm. You so when you get somebody that's that professional, yeah. no matter what's going yeah. on, mm -hmm. but it's not professional to a point mm -hmm. where it's oh yeah, they just get paid to do mm -hmm. this. Right? Mm -hmm. No, nah, we could be up here for free. Yeah, mm -hmm. which we've done a lot of those too. Right, sure. right, right, right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like he said, man, you've like you've tapped into so many different guys' careers. Mm -hmm without even necessarily trying in a lot of ways. Right. Some guys, you pulled them along. Some guys mm -hmm. just looked at you from a distance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I tell him, like the time me, me yeah. coming to your crib, trying to show you different things just to get my foot in the door. I was like, Reese, I could program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right, like, right. You're like, well, Calvin, he told me. I was like, nah, I get it. <laughs> like, now I know you and Calvin. Got right, I know y'all got that thing. I was like, but I do dabble I in do drums, that. but I program it. Just in case. <laughs> but dog, on, the, on some real, like, to come to your crib or play mm -hmm. stuff and then come mm -hmm. to a place where it's like, yo, I want to try you out on Man of Standard. Mm -hmm. You yeah. giving me the place in Man of Standard, mm -hmm. then you leaving, boom, now I'm the music director. Yep. Who Dawkins comes Dawkins. in? Dawkins. This dude. Yep. Facts. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again, like it's just, mm -hmm. you told Ike, you was like, bro, we good. He was mm -hmm. like, because you know how Ike is. <laughs> so I was like, yo, is he ready? Like, mm -hmm. how does he sound? Ike was, <laughs> he was hard. <laughs> I was like... All right. And that's what me mm -hmm. and from that day, yeah. it was a wrap. Yeah. But like you just putting people on, like you changing, you making, you made some of us grown men. Yeah. When it came to music. Cause yeah. it was like when we knew we was about to mm -hmm. rock with you, it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't come in here like you, you a can't. kid. Yeah. Like this, the mm -hmm. album, my program, mm -hmm. it was you, mm -hmm. Spanky, mm -hmm. David Blakely, wow, Joe Smith on drums. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, I remember that. What and record is this? Richard Darius, Gibbs? Darius Brooks. No, it was Darius Brooks. He did a record. He brought in Joe Smith and and all us. That's the first time I played with Joe. Mm. I played bass and he played drum. Man, let me tell you something. I went and picked <laughs> him up every day. I was his armor bear, bro. Really? Because I had Joe Smith, somebody who I idolized as yeah. a kid in my city, and he was playing drums and I was playing with him. Yeah. I was just, I was scared. Of course. Because he's the dopest bass yeah, player. for sure. And he taught me so much. First of all, he said, wait a minute. I love your playing. Wow. I just want you to play like you play. Yeah. But he gave me so many little tidbits, tidbits about bass playing, about different scales, and about playing through chord structures and substituting notes yeah, yeah. the appropriate way, the way he mm -hmm. did that stuff. And he was like, man, you see how Anthony Jackson did that? That's that. That's that. And he taught me so much, bro. Wow, I didn't know that. And that became, me and him, we became super close after that. I talked to him all the way up till he died. We'd just be like, what's up? How you right. doing? How you yeah. feeling? And that was y'all first time playing together? Yeah. Yeah. But he had been listening to me. I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah. He was like, dude, you murdered that Kirk yeah. Car record. I, you came right after me and just, bam. Wow. I'm like, this Joe Smith talking. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. does something to you too. It, it does, gives you confidence. It just, it just yeah, man, that's a whole nother level. Of yeah, it's sure. like to be him, to yeah. be in, in like friends with those guys, John, they do both, all them guys like that. Just being my friends, it just I'm a part of their world. Right, now. yeah. Some people yeah. I was looking up to. Yeah, Frankie at the time before he died mm -hmm. to be able to play with him. I played a Mighty Clouds of Joy record with Spanky and Kahari, and um, who else was on keys? Um, used to play with Bobby Jones, um, Derek, Derek Lee, Derek Lee, yeah. yeah. That was a super band. Yeah. Um, what's my man name, young fella? Um, a Ron. A Ron. Yep. And oh, Daniel really? Weatherspoon. Mm -hmm. We all played. The oh, Mighty God. That record is killing too, bro. Kahari laying that thing out. Kahari. And to be able to play, I'm like, this is the Mighty Cloud of Joy. My daddy Cl played this stuff. Right, right. Playing with the Wine and his family and from BB, from yeah. CC, tour with CC, recorded yeah. with CC, recorded with Marvin. And these are people. I'm like, what is going on? What's happening? Clark Sisters. Yeah. Recorded I don't a think couple of their records. Is there anybody in gospel that nope. you haven't played with that you wanted to? No, nah, man. And I end up, either if I didn't tour with them, I, I cut a record, I yeah. played a song yeah. of theirs or so, did something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like that, bro. Yeah. Anybody that passed through the gospel channels, I had some kind of, I touched it. Yeah. At, at one period of time. Right. Kim Burrell was somebody, I remember she came to John P. Key Convention before her record came out. And Mark Taylor was like, this girl is phenomenal. Listen, she sang at the convention. I'm like, this record crazy. And it's Chris Dave and Barry, D, all of them on yeah. that record. And then the next record came out. And then she she told me, she called me herself. And she yes. was like, I want you to do my next record. I I love your bass. I said, I don't play like Barry. I don't play all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't want you to do that. Don't even uh, come in here playing yeah. like that. She was like, be you. And that record changed my life. I and remember. that record wasn't perfect. Yeah, it was. A lot of flaws. It, it wasn't perfect. You talking about the record? Yeah. The of that record. That's what got me. I it's remember. unbelievable. I Phenomenal. remember crying it's, going to school it's, on listening to yeah. that Some record. of the stuff I played yeah. on the record, I was like, dang. Yeah. Wow. It, it was life-changing, bro. Like, I remember <laughs> literally, uh, I was on the mm -hmm. bus on Chicago Avenue bus. I'll never forget it. Wow. This lady asked me, was I okay? What? She was like, right, son, are you okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm literally listening mm -hmm. to that record mm -hmm. and tears start falling because I'm like, wow. I want to be able to do that. Wow. I want to be able to, to <laughs> invoke emotion when playing. Man, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. 17, 18 mm -hmm. at the time, 17, mm -hmm. and listening to this record. I was like, I know that guy. Wow. I know him. I got his number in my in my sidekick. I can literally text him. Man. And to, to be listening to this record, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, I get emotional, bro, because it's like, wow. The the fact that he's able to make me cry on this bus wow. lets me know that I'm I'm supposed to be doing this. Wow. They got to. It's, Let me tell I, you, you said the back, piggybacking off that Volley Craig man played, played with me on that record. Yeah. What? Volley came to my room and was like, the way you playing, my yeah, bro. Yep. It's tearing me up in the inside. I'm telling you. He said, man, you play with so much emotion, man. He yeah. said, you touch me, bro. Yeah. You my uh, favorite bass player. Volley. Volley Craig. Craig. Yep. Volley. Amazing. But he's like, you you, you doing something to me. Yeah. yeah. He told me, he loved me all the way up till he died. He said, Mo, you my bass player. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And it wasn't me trying to, I just get in the music and I just become it. It's yeah. the God in I just you, bro. Be like, I, my, all of the pain, all of oh, my affections, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. I be praising God of on course. these records, bro. Oh, yeah. Of course. I be like, God, deliver me, heal me yeah. through this stuff. All the yeah. things I need. All the things be coming yeah. out of me while yeah. I'm recording, bro. 
People That's can hard. feel it. You know what I'm saying? For people sure. can feel it. Yeah. And yeah. if they don't, if mm-hmm. they did know it, mm-hmm. they know it now because yeah. it's something different. And I listen to lyrics. I can tell you do too. Oh, I got that from oh, you. Yeah. I, I, you got to be part of the vocals and what's, what the song is. Because at. if you're not, you're just you're playing a bunch of moment. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to play right. Yeah. When you, dude, I listened to you on that Mama Sap record y'all did. It's a song on that, man. I say, this dude right here is playing. This. He part of this melody in the lyric. Maurice 2.0. He became a grown man. I was oh, like, yeah. with them Marvin dude, records, that was a whole different Swole, thing. You want them records, bro? I, I literally, I because again. Blew me away. I didn't have the end that you had. When they mm-hmm. called me for that record, it was because Daryl was going out on a play with Kevin wow. Bond. Wow. So when Calvin recommended me, mm-hmm. I'm like, how? Like, what? Wow. how did I get this opportunity? Wow. So I'm always playing from a place mm-hmm. of. Man, I'm just grateful to be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I hope they mm-hmm. don't fire me. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope I hope that I can get the job mm-hmm. done. And I got that emotional mm-hmm. place from you. I, mm-hmm. I watch you do that. I watch you record wow. those records. And then a lyric start happening. Mm-hmm. It's like, I ain't no good when them lyrics start happening. If they hit home, I'm liable <laughs> to fall would, out. We, that's, that would be us. Bro. I'm we, telling you. We'd be crying. <laughs> Man, listen, bro. <laughs> Yo, he was the saying? first bass player I ever played mm-hmm. with. That just dropped the bass. <laughs> yeah. like, what, the? what is this guy like, doing? We got a job to do, bro. But I don't. You get to thinking about man. I'm from the West oh, Side, no. West side bro. With alley rats running up and through that, my but room. See, that's yeah. the you know thing. what I mean? It yeah. makes you look at it from a <laughs> whole different. You're not looking at it as right. a profession. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm man. like, this dude feels what he. So it's like yeah. I get it. Like that's mm-hmm. all. That's a missing. Mm-hmm. Art, yeah, now. for yes, sure. It it's not yeah. they. They don't even think about. It. It's just mm-hmm. let me show y'all I can play. Yeah, they ain't even paying attention to the lyrics. No. You can tell if by they how they, know. yeah, right. Right. how if they, they playing right. over top of the song. I can right. tell you don't know this song yeah, lyrically. Know, right, I yeah. can tell. You what you're playing match. doesn't match. It don't even don't match, match the lyrics. Yeah, the room, you know what I'm saying for sure. And that's 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 something. And you know what? I I I would hear Joel and them doing that with the Hawkins man. Joe got a lot of chops, right? Yeah, for sure. But yeah. the way he played the Hawkins music, he played it mm-hmm. with intention. Yeah. Every every note was intentional yeah. through what the word was saying, mm-hmm. what the melody was doing, what the vocals. I said, man. And so even Darius Brooks and Percy and them, I got to say, yeah. they taught me that mm-hmm. too. Be intentional about yeah. playing it's Percy too. I love Percy Beatty was a major part yeah, of my, facts. Me too. my life, bro. Yeah. Y'all got started. Yeah. I grew up on the west side of Chicago. They lived across the street from me, bro. Mm. I grew up with Percy and them being my big bros at going to the same elementary school as Ray and Robert and his sister and all oh, them. That's crazy. And Reverend Beatty worked at the high at the grammar school I went to. He was like, boy, I guess I want to sit down, boy. <laughs> Your mama said, he whooped my butt. No. And, and Percy was a star then. Yeah, he was. Before I yep. even played that's that. That's crazy. He yep. was playing yep. with the winest. Yep. He was like, Percy, I was the winest. You know that, boy. He gone. Wow. He was a major star. Yeah. So when I got around Percy for the first time and I he allowed me to record around him, he gave me a wealth of information, bro, on how to have a sound, how to play right. Yeah. Percy yeah. is the sensation. That Marvin Sapp, he really is. Grace and Mercy record. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that was That was like <laughs> And that was Steve, Ray, yeah. Al. And they had brought Rodney in. That was Rodney's first major record. But I'm talking about when they went from the record to the to the, so, oh, to the video. Yeah. To the video. Man, I remember when they asked me to be part of that, bro. I had just did, finished up my kind of my run with Fred, I mean with John. And I was kind of at the crib trying to figure out what my next move was. And that's when I transitioned to play with Marvin Sapp. Um, they brought me in. Gray said, man, you're going to play with me with Marvin, dude. It's Grace and Mercy. We were rehearsing in his living room in Hazelcrest. Oh, wow. yeah. He had the red I've drum set in. Oh, yeah. And we were rehearsed there religiously all the time, man, preparing for that. And I, me and Teddy Campbell, yo, Teddy rolled down there with me to the video. You played the, the octave thing on that too. I sure did because that was my thing now. Wow, I just yep. thought about. Wait, one what song? I forgot, but I I did it on something. You definitely did. Oh, uh, I'll tell you before this because mm-hmm. again, I just watched that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember mean, those shirts were terrible, y'all. Yeah, they were. Maybe we went to Oak Tree somewhere and got them. Oh my god! Oh, what, <laughs> what, wild pair for some <laughs> shirt. <laughs> They look like little curtains. We they were definitely look like curtains. <laughs> yo, that <laughs> was yo. That was one of the DVDs. Well, it was a we was mm-hmm. watching the VHS. Mm-hmm. I was watching. It hadn't came out yet, and mm-hmm. Ray bought it to the studio mm-hmm. where Youth Edition Youth was Edition. recorded. Wow! And I was watching it, and that's when I told Ray I wanted an MP. Wow! Wow! But I li- looking at you and Al. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah. It was like, like Rodney Man. East, he's been a star since right. he was a teenager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was just always mm-hmm. in his own. Mm-hmm. He was covered, mm-hmm. it seemed mm-hmm. like. So, but seeing y'all in the and then Ray, like, like dog, y'all literally was st- that put y'all in a different. Oh, for mm-hmm. sure. Because you that, got guys that play, mm-hmm. but then you got guys that these, yep. have this th- their own thing. Yeah, yeah we, you know we, what I'm saying. We put a hump on that thing, and it was just Richard. Like, wow, that was amazing. Yeah, another historic moment, bro. It's so many videos, man. Like the show up, the Marmoset, the Kimberrells, yeah, the Fred. Ha- bro, let me tell you, Fred, Fred Hammond in Chicago. About. It's crazy. Fred, I had, I was done. I had just got married, man. I, you know, I crib. played at his wedding. No yeah, way. Him and Kevin Randolph. <laughs> and I was <laughs> off the road for a minute trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was about to literally take a job at Comcast, man. You talking really? about this after John? You talking about? Yep. Yeah, because oh, I right. didn't know what my next what move was. On, was. Yeah. I was in a dark place, like, oh, music. I guess it's over with. I played bass. I had my time. I guess I'd be a church yeah. bass player. And, man, I was just about to start. Severio had got me the job. Severio. I was supposed to go in on Monday. Fred called me on a Sunday night. He said, yo, this Fred Hammond. Mm. I was like, what? He said, man, I got your number from um, Eric Dawkins. Wow. Terrence just stepped down. I want you to come play bass for me. That's how that happened. Wow. They flew me into Detroit the next week, and we started rehearsing for Live in Vegas. Are you serious? That's how that happened, bro. That was your first gig with Fred? Live, that was I had I did some did some local gigs, but that was my first. This is my oh, playing bass for me. To wow, you playing a PV? Playing that PV Cyrus, and you I was playing the tamarind. Yeah, I played the tamarind. While he played, played, while, he played while he played. Yeah, you the played the tamarind at the top. But <laughs> I was like, what I'm gonna do? I ain't gonna definitely just stay here wait till you get through playing. No, but yo, but so the second uh-huh. one was the Chicago. That was the Chicago. Yeah. But that live at MGM. I was set your a, stuff up that day too. Went yeah. to your house, picked in it Chicago? up. Chicago. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah, he was with me. What? <laughs> I went and picked everything up, loaded Man. in his truck, drove down in wow. my car to Navy Pier, took the stuff out, set it up, and I sure sat there. Did. Yeah, sure did. That's so. Wait, so the so how did you feel coming out of? Did that Vegas thing put you in a different mindset? Because now, like that type of DVD was different. It was like I seen gospel. It was gospel two point oh. Uh, Fred was on the high. He yeah, was like, let's do it big. Yeah, we gonna. He had y'all was at the MGM studio. Yeah, he had a rehearsal studio in Detroit. You know his. He had a whole facility with yeah. studios. He had bases everywhere. It was like whoa, production. Yeah. What is this? What's going? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, man, we gonna do a big love. We going to MGM Grand. We gonna do it big in Vegas. Let's do it here. And man, it was like wow. He had tour buses with sleepers and yeah, like, whoa. Right. So yeah. I was just like, God, I thought it was over. Yeah, this my next leg. Wow. Yeah. And then he just out of here. I thought it was done, man. That's crazy. After John, I went home. I'm like, oh, I guess I ain't gonna do nothing. He right. would have never thought that. Never. And y'all They'd have thought know. you jumped right into. And I got in that camp, man. And I was just playing from a place of gratefulness, yeah, man. For sure. You can see it in my spirit, on my face, the way I played. Yeah. I was grateful, bro, to be there. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not a band that you just up and get. Because, like I tell people mm-hmm. all the time, even the way I move, I learn to move as a band. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you see a certain group of guys mm-hmm. or musicians, mm-hmm. you like, okay. For sure. They about, and that's how it was with Fred Band, mm-hmm. like even when Terrence was there. Mm-hmm. When they came and did the Gospel Fest, it was like crazy. They was like Earth, Wind, and Fire. They were. Yep. It was like. Literally. Let, and so I'm like, wait a minute. I'm playing with Mama McQuitty. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. They the biggest of the biggest right now. God, you put me with the next biggest of the biggest. Yeah. It kept being like that, bro. Was it hard to integrate with them, though? Because everybody was from Detroit, but you. Right. Like, and your sound was different from Terrence. They Powers told too. me, Fred say, I love that Chicago thing. Bro. Really? <laughs> Do that. Yeah. Don't play like Terrence. I wasn't going to play like Terrence. Yeah. No, I could. I didn't have the you mindset have it, to. Yeah. And then at that point, I was, I, I felt, I was yourself. confident yeah. like yeah, that sure. I was me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I was just me in that thing, situation. Aaron Lindsay was in that band, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Israel? Israel was yeah. in that band. Yeah. That's Aaron Lindsay and Israel hooked up because me and Israel was roommates. On that, because Fred was about to work on his record. So he was on tour with us. Really? But I love playing video games all night. So Israel didn't. So everybody be in the room playing the game with me. Like, you know, I'm trying to sleep, man. I want to sleep. I said, man, well, you need to change rooms, right, you got to get you somebody and else. And Aaron became roommates. Wow. They started talking about the record. They 
did the, when they did that record together. Yeah. And it was they And was then Israel it. jokingly was like, dude, if you didn't play video games and get on my nerves and put me in a room with this guy, things wouldn't happen like wow. that. Thank you, Maurice. Yeah. He said we talk about crazy. it to this day. We laugh about it. Wow. So that was that was my guy. He was on the road with me, bro. Big That's time. Crazy. Yeah. So man. I was excited, man, yeah. about playing with these guys and just bringing me to the and that's that's how I brought Joey Woolfolk into the fold. Fred said, I want an acoustic player to play with Daryl Dixon. I said, I got a guy, Joey Woolfolk. Wow. That's how Joey came in. Yeah. That was his first gig. That too, was right? his first gig with Fred on that MGM. Wow. Joey <laughs> bought me a, a brand new coat for Christmas that week. <laughs> of course he I'm did. Sure he did. I, I kept of putting him on did. records. I brought him in with uh, Kevin Bond was like, hey man, Jonathan DeBose ain't available. We need a good top player. I said, we use Al. Let's just go with Joey. Yeah. Brought him in to do the T D Jakes record. So Joey, I just kept putting the bring of Joey yeah, with him. Yeah. Say, man, thank you, man. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Bought me a coat from the gap. Thank you, man. Like that I is just, so dope. Like when you have a friend and you enjoy yeah. playing with them, you want them on the road with you. Oh, man. absolutely. And, this, sure. and when Calvin time came around, I brought Calvin in. At yeah. Time. Yeah. You know, because me and Calvin had stopped forming all the things with Sweet Holy. And I just I brought him in John Camp first. I brought yeah. him in John, yeah. then I brought him in Fred later. Yeah. He became the MD in them situations. So wow. that's how that's how I got out. You know that. So let me ask you this: When you did the, how big a of a jump was it for you when you went to do Destiny's Child? It was amazing. first of all how did it happen, and it, then I got to tell was, you that story. So I'm out with Fred. Fred doing this play. It was six months long, bro. I had been on the road six months doing a freaking play. Where y'all was in the y'all was sitting uh, on jurors. the stage. We was the jurors, and then when it was time, <laughs> oh, yeah, to play, I took I took Tiff to that play. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Now I was up there farting and sleeping. <laughs> oh, like, my, oh god. my god, I wasn't used to plays. Y'all played at the Regal, but Fred, though. I, I gotta say, yeah. Fred kept his band working, bro. Yeah, he kept us. He kept us eating, and so I remember getting a call from Ronnie East and Tanitra, or Michelle from we call her Michelle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they was like, hey, what's up, Maurice? I'm like, what's up? And they like, um, hey, Ethan just got the Johnny gig. Um, Rodney <laughs> told me that um, you would be a good fit to come play for Destiny's Child. I was like, you want to? I said, absolutely. They say, okay, cool. We're going to hook it up. So they was like, can you send, like, some tapes and some, like, some stuff or whatever, whatever? And I sent some stuff to Ken Burris, and then they put me on the phone with, with Kimberly Burris, and Ken Burris was like, was that you, the guy on the, um, the um, what's the name, the Kim Burrell? I said, yeah. They say, Beyonce love that. Really? She love Kim Burrell. That's you? I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you bad. We going to get, yeah, you coming down here. Kim Burst, Rodney East, they made it happen. Rob Bacon wow. didn't know me. Rob was trying to put Eric um, Eric Smith on it because he was like, I don't know that guy. Right. Yeah. Who was he? Yeah. And that, rightfully so. That he he didn't, know, guys yeah. in. He didn't yeah. know me. So there was a little friction when I got there. It was like. Yeah, let's see what you're gonna do. Yeah, all right. Survivor, what's up? So they thought they was gonna trick me up with that key base. Yeah. But little did they know, I had when I found out that I was about to be the guy, I got that live rodeo show they did mm-hmm. with Ethan playing oh, on yeah. there. I had a VCR in my room and Mano was my roommate. We brought one of them scent bases off the stage. I'm from we had gear out there with Fred. He was like, now play the key base like this. Blah, blah, blah. He in the room wow. with me. I stayed up every night. Working on key bass so I wouldn't die on key yeah, bass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and made sure I got down there and I was ready, bro. My preparation got made me be able to keep the gig that they called me to come do. Yeah. But they recommended me, but if I didn't come in, yeah, for kill, sure you definitely and he would not tell me for weeks I had the gig. We did TV shows, everything, and it took me going to Europe, and I played that show flawlessly. And he came to my room saying, "Congratulations, man! These are tour dates." Wow. It happened just like that. That's how I got on that. That's, That's crazy. No. <laughs> Cause I tell you this, mm-hmm. when you come back from certain like mm-hmm. tours, mm-hmm. it's a different. So I remember mm-hmm. I saw you and Rodney East mm-hmm. walk in fellowship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, first of all, they don't have to sit on the front row. Right. They aren't performing. Yeah. Right. Y'all came down with the two ways. Oh, for sure. I was like, I have to walk to the front row. For like sure. That. <laughs> for sure. But it was a certain like jokingly, mm-hmm. but like it was a certain respect. It was like, mm-hmm. yo. That's what I aspire to be. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like y'all mm-hmm. seeing dudes like y'all, like mm-hmm. st- it made it made like Swo said, certain things seem possible. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. It gave us because we were still mm-hmm. here. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, you know, with no saying? opportunities, too. none. So yeah. it wasn't that we was in L.A. Mm-hmm. or yeah, doing. Yeah. It's like wow. nah, we was here. So wow. if we was to impress y'all, mm-hmm. 
We was like, yeah, because Swole, he'd be like, yo, man, Reese need me to do it. He was excited. If you call mm-hmm. him to fill in for something, mm-hmm. the respect he had for you, yeah. Swole man. was like, yo, I got to nail this. I was like, Swole, <laughs> relax. He called you. You're good. Wow. But it's a thing, like, like yep. I said, when you see y'all coming in and popping mm-hmm. in doing these things, it's like, this is what they do. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? This. So when y'all got the Destiny Shot, Kahari, yeah. rest mm-hmm. in peace. I called Kahari like, dog, you've made it. <laughs> like, that was my thought problem. I was just. And Kahari got on it when I was, I had it, and Kahari wasn't there first. Jamie was still there, Jamie, right? Now he had got fired. They had fired Jamie, and they had oh, um, uh, Donnell Spencer. Yeah, Donnell Spencer. And he was an old school pocket drummer. Yeah, yeah. But they, they just was wanting some pockets so yeah. bad that they just went way and got, got, he was a good solid drummer. Yeah. He just, the swagger that the girls, they just did they they just different swag. Yeah, yeah, he was solid. Now, he sure. was solid, but it just didn't match. So no disrespect to him, but they wanted to go another direction. And when we were there rehearsing, we was at SRI, and Kahari was there rehearsing with a saxophone player in the next room next door. You are lying. And I said, and I and he wasn't the I saw him. I said, bro, what's up? We hollering. He said, I said, he said man, you got that? I said, yeah, bro. He said, man, good cracks. He said, who playing? I said, this guy ain't done that. He said, man, that's what's up, Reese. I'm so happy to see you do that. I saw him there. We got to Europe, and they wanted to switch the drummers when we got back to L.A. They was like, when we get back to L.A., we want to get another drummer. I ain't going to lie. I called Calvin first. Really? <laughs> Calvin, I said, Calvin, come do this Dusty Child with me. He said, man, I just got robbed days, man. We were hustling oh, in Florida. Wow. I can't bail like that. I said, you sure? He was like, I can't do it. Now, mind you, Rex was like, Reese, put me on. I this. remember that, yeah. I felt, I, I wasn't the god of picking whoever, but I was just like, I think he needs to wait a little second. Mm. Yeah. And he, it, it hurt him. Oh, it hurt me. We talked about yeah, it. Yeah. So you you knew that he was going to call you or he was thinking about you? I, I, I mean, we were talking. Like, oh, we had, wow. and then, me bro. and Calvin. Got you got to think. So, Calvin. And, and so, I hadn't had enough tenure with him to know. Mm. And so I did not that I not that I didn't believe you could play. It wasn't even that. It was like God, God knew. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh no, I knew and, for and sure. So I made a decision. I said, man, Kahari Parker. Because wow. I had just did a record with him with, with Vashon, did a record at Sweet Holy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. first time Kahari yeah. was murdering, bro. <laughs> Dog, what record did, is this? Uh, <laughs> it was Vashon record that didn't even come out before his first records came. Um, Daniel Weatherspoon produced it. Oh when I tell God. you, it was crazy. Really? And yes. so I was like, this dude is... And we was playing together with Alfonso Hunter. An oh, R&B wow. guy called yeah, Alfonso yeah. Hunter. Mm. And so I called Kahari from Europe and said, hey, can you be in L.A. in, in a day or so? Be the, meet us there. I said, bro, Destiny's Child gig just opened up, and I want you to play with me. Wow. Rob Bacon just told me to pick my drama who I want to play with. Really? I said, come down there and be ready. We got there. Kahari was sitting on the drums. We just started counting off the songs. He knew the music. He knew that music, and he was blazing it. Next, next, right. next, oh, next. He's a pro. Skinny. Uh, yeah, yeah. And she passed away. Yeah. Uh, tragically. Uh, and she was playing Colors, and then she... She she was doing so many movies and film scores. She was like, I'm staying home. I ain't yeah. going to do the run. And Freddie was just hanging out, taking us to the store and stuff. Yeah. It was like, you, you want to play Colors? Wow. He got on the gig <laughs> by default. And he jumped on the keys and he toured with us. That's crazy. I absolutely yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that's how he got put on. He was just hanging out because he lived in L.A. Yeah. yeah. He was driving us around and hanging out. And when that, when that happened, he just stepped in on Colors. And that's how he was. Me, Bennett. Kahari and Rob Bacon. That's how it came about. <laughs> Dog, those gigs seem so out of reach. Yeah. It, 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 it felt out of reach for me. I couldn't believe That's when I knew I said, God, you, it's you. Yeah. Because yeah. how could I get here? Right, right. Yeah. How did I get there? Yeah. This is L.A. They got people lined up around the yep, buildings. For sure. Yeah. Yep. But it was my time. It yep. was my season. And I had to start recognizing, God, I'm going to trust you because you finna take me to, I don't even know how it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It ain't easy trusting. And, bro. bro but I had to put in the work, though. Yeah, yeah. I had to make sure I was on it. One thing I used to be scared of was key bass. I was scared. Me too. Yeah. I hate key bass. I was like, bass. ooh, ooh, yeah. I was scared. Because it's, it's, it's a different monster. It's a different thing. Yeah. But when you do it and yeah. say, I can do it, yeah. 
I was playing that thing like I've been playing it forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it just, it, you know what I mean? You make yourself do it. You have you to. Do it. Because you yeah. want to go to the next level, you, you have to, to do what it takes. You have yeah. to do it. You know, I don't go around playing the clubs with it now. For like, what? Like, yeah. moogging it out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was, <laughs> I ain't that person either. I ain't that I'm guy. They music. be like, you play key bass? Yeah, but I ain't finna do it up in here. If I'm I don't got to play, play it, I ain't strong. playing it. Oh, for yeah. real. Like, it's yeah. got to be a tour, but bro. Some, some people feel like when they've reached a certain level, they don't have to dig in the bag and figure nothing else out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. easy to do that, too. Mm-hmm. Once yeah. you get to a certain level, mm-hmm. you get comfortable. You're like, man, I ain't got to do that. Yeah. But if you, you sure want to go to the level after that, you just got to keep evolving. But you know those gigs, if you wasn't on that key base, you was going home. Yeah, for sure. Oh, immediately. Yeah. All the yeah, way home. Man, I, listen, I told so I said, listen, bro. I was like, we playing mm-hmm. key base at my church. Yeah, mm-hmm. facts. Mm-hmm. Because whatever we do here, they're right. already doing out yep. there. Right. Right. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just like, we need to be prepared mm-hmm. for everything. Yeah, for you sure. You have to be. You know what I'm saying? Got, I don't even, do a lot of people know you play with Kales? They didn't know that. I did it two years And later. that, how, there's really. I play all key bass. I was just about to say, it ain't really song, no maybe, bass on maybe his. Maybe two songs yeah. on live. So bass. how did you feel about that? Because I was, I was, playing for him is way different. It's way different. And so for me, how I felt about it, I was like. This is going to be different. But I wanted the challenge. Though. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I wanted the challenge. And I, I I actually loved his music, his arrangements. I'm like, this stuff is that. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a different mindset to just say, man, I got to play all key bass. But guess what I did? Yeah. I lived, That's when I had moved downtown. I, had, I was like, I ain't got much space. It's my big house. But my living room in that apartment, in that townhouse, I had a key move bass set up right in front with my computer at the bass. And all I did for Hours and yeah. hours, and I was playing them songs up and down like I was on the stage. Just yeah. until oh, yeah. I became fearless, like no fear. I ain't want no fear. I ain't want to be thinking. Right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. I, I just kept playing it. Mm-hmm. I said, treat this like this is your bass. Yeah. This is an extension of you. This is what you got to do. And then it just became second nature to knock it out. Yeah. Even Rodney and, and Andre Henry was so impressed with, like, they said, Reese, we never seen you play this much key bass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You are a true professional to do that yeah and it was like respect you know what i mean but i made myself do it yeah who was playing drums queen right no it was um my man Dewan? from indian Dewan. oh okay one okay. Watson. Mm-hmm. and i and i got sharaik told me he he, he didn't want to do it that for that run yeah he, he gave me the gig said man going out there and, and do the joint wow and that's how i ended up getting on it you know what i mean that's dope mm-hmm. that's super dope mm-hmm. people don't know yeah, because they call you a bass player as bass player. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Without question. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like yeah. Swole said, there's a lot. Even in them pockets, man, it was dope to see you. take. Because even when you got called for Rob, I was like, mm-hmm. Reese really about to go out there. Right. Mm-hmm. And not on mm-hmm. some, he couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. It's just like on a gig like mm-hmm. his, mm-hmm. you don't do nothing but what's there. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That was some discipline, bro. I, I But I was... I, I wasn't scared of it. No, I'm again. I'm like, oh, that's the song. Okay, I played the song. Yeah, but right. it takes, but like you said, a mm-hmm. certain discipline, mm-hmm. and not that you are, you don't play with mm-hmm. discipline, but it's a different type of it's discipline. It's a different. Yeah. Because now you're playing specifically what somebody else exactly. hears. Exactly. Yeah. He you didn't know? even want to slide no, if it wasn't on the record. Absolutely yeah. not. If you did a slide, he, dude, Donnie, like, hey, wait a minute, hey, hey, dude, that ain't on the record? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I can't even slide? Nope. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> not on the record, yeah. dog. I said, oh, it's, it's, this, this is what this is. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, play just adapt. like they tell me yeah, to do. Exactly. You know, what I'm you know how many people can't yep. do that. Yeah, they can't. They, it's the be hardest home. thing for yeah. them. That that'd be like it, they'd be mad, they'd be cussing, they'd be mad. They feel like they're playing with handcuffs. Yeah, them. but it's a discipline in that. Like other bands, like they would hear us play. It's like, dude, y'all, y'all so professional, yeah. disciplined, yeah. bro. Y'all sound like a wall. Like yeah. it was, <laughs> it was mad respect for us doing it the way. Yeah. Rob, all, he his tours was banging. You know, you played with him. Yeah. Yeah, he was a... Mm-hmm. Rob, and all the stuff I did was Rob, when Rob was in a studio. Mm-hmm. Like, Calvin did mm-hmm. the tour, mm-hmm. and even when he got it, I was mm-hmm. looking at him, same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went down in a... Mm-hmm. It was a storm. Yeah. A snowstorm. And I yeah. went down to Music Garage to help Calvin set up. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. I told Calvin how to set his drums up a certain way. I was like, wow. this is different. And mind yes. you, I, he'll tell you, like, mm-hmm. but I was like, whatever you need. Wow. I was helping him program his pad. Really? That's crazy. Yeah, it was I him. It was him, Rodney, right. Donnie, right. Kendall. 
Yeah. And that's another thing I learned too, with them being very particular about bass songs. Yeah. I had a rack of bass tones. I had to just sort through them, make sure I was playing the right, the right bass sound. Yeah. Love bases, yeah. the moogs, mm-hmm. some with a little more attack. Yeah. I had to know and have my thing figured out programming yeah. wise. So it it opened me up yeah. to a whole nother spectrum of bass. Because I had we experience. ain't never done that before. Yeah, yeah I, I just like plug up. Yep, exactly. Put, yep. That's it, you know. Yep. Now this was different. You yeah. know what I mean? I had to be able to get to them sounds. It wasn't no, you know, that stuff just going. It's yeah, just yeah. one continuous it's flow. Absolutely. You can't stop it. You ain't no way body waiting on you to switch You got to know what's going on. So you, I had to get used to being like that and like, oh, I got, I know all my, you know, programming my wow. stuff. So it was, it was, that was a new challenge for me. And yeah. It was dope, you know what I mean, for that. No, you laid mm-hmm. that joint out, bro. Yeah, thanks, bro. Like I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad you took the road you took. Yeah. Had you not been in the alley mm-hmm. and finding yeah. the James Jameson yep. bench <laughs> with two strings you on it, known, bro. Yeah. Like that's that's a that's a documentary, bro. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's a for real because it's yeah. like you were you thinking about bass or I, was I love it, bass. I used to like I like the sound of it. Like I hear it on records. I was like, oh, that's, not... but I didn't, I fell in love with bass. It's a weird story, bro. I'm going to tell you what made me want to be a bass player. I don't think I ever told nobody this. I was down at the Buckingham Fountain with my auntie. And she had took the kids down there you know, at night and the colors on the yeah, lights yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And there was a band down there. It was a blues band. And it was a drummer, a bass player, and a guitar player. The bass player was walking the stank out of this bass. <laughs> I was like, and the people, I just, I, I was mortified by this this white guy with wild hair playing the bass. Just boom, boom, boom. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I love the bass then. Wow. That's crazy. And you have Seeing no it idea. And somebody who that just is playing. Yeah. And then what brought it all home was like, I got a bass, now I'm then Steve Huff on those gospel records. Then I started honing in to the sound of bass. And every record I would hear now and everything stuck out. I used to love May's bass player, my man named Dewey, the way he played Frankie Beverly stuff. Mm. I love the way that dude grooved yeah. on them records. That was my inspiration. I wanted to play like those, the dude on the Maze record. Wow. That was That's how crazy. That sound got in my head. And then to hear a guy by the Buckingham Fountain, and you, still, you don't even know who that is. I don't even who know that his that. name. He was just a guy playing with a band down there, and he was rocking that joint, yeah. bro. And I was like, whoa. Out there, base in the alley. Shortly after, your story is pretty phenomenal, bro. Seriously, it really is. It's wow. pretty phenomenal. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Well, bro, so let me. This is the last mm-hmm. thing. Um, what would you say to just not even the younger generation, just a generation of? I don't even like saying musicians because we reach more than that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But just far as them not giving up. Them thinking, oh, you just came out of this gig, mm-hmm. popped into this one, like you was about to get a job, mm-hmm. which it, right. we have jobs, yeah, you right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, but right. like just something to give them some inspiration as somebody like who's been doing it at the level you've been doing it. Mm-hmm. Like what would you say so they don't get discouraged? Man, you got to find your passion in that in that thing that you're doing. You got to love it and be very intentional about loving what you do, respect what you do, don't let, like, the the problem with younger guys, they like music, they like being musicians, and they almost feel like they, they once they learn how to play, they're entitled to, they feel mm. entitled, like, I gotta be, I'm better than him. Yeah. I can outplay him while he got that. Yeah. I never got gigs because I was, like, trying to be better than somebody. Yeah. I just did what I did. I loved it. I was very intentional about it. I was very passionate about what I did. And when it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. Just be prepared. But don't treat being a musician musician like it's a sport. Like, you know, I, like I, I'm I'm entitled to this. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take his spot. Mm-hmm. All that mindset, it's not sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then just try on a local, being at church, being accountable and just being yeah. dope at church. Yeah. And being a professional in what you already have. Yeah. And then when the doors open up, you ready to walk in them. Yeah. Yeah. So practice, I was practicing being a professional with Dan Willis. <laughs> right. Didn't know it, yeah, but yeah, I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when the doors opened, I was ready. Yeah. yeah. That's what I say to them guys like that. And find somebody, man, that, that's doing it and and, be, and serve under them, man. Like, yeah. like Swole. For sure. Come to me, man. Like, mm-hmm. he knew I was the guy doing it. 
man, get with somebody who's doing it or who have done it and let that be. You got to have a mentor or some yeah. kind of inspiration yeah. to get you to the next place. Yeah. I you got to put your pride inside, you have too. To. You have to be humble yep. in that, man. Yep. This dude was carrying my stuff, and he a giant. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't let him touch his bases. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. You like, was offended? For sure. Was, like, man, man, give me this like, space. He served me, yep. bro. Like, yeah. that was my bro. Yep. No, for real. You know, so it's that. It's like you got to go back to that old school where how we came up. That's almost a lost thing now. Yeah, for sure. It's Everything is so like, I see it on YouTube. I'm just going to try to chop yeah. the coal. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to get put on. Why well, he got to get it. Yep. I'll kill him. Hey man, stop all that. Yeah, that ain't got nothing. Ain't got to do with it. it ain't our with gig, no way. It ain't, it ain't none gig. of our yeah, gig. For real. Cause the artist could be like, eh, I want this other guy. Trust me, yeah. they will and send your butt yeah. home so quick. Or you get they replaced ain't... with a, a statue. So will <laughs> trust me. I know. Yeah. Replaced with some stems for real, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For That's real. another thing. Keep these relationships tight. Yeah, you have to, don't man. Get, don't you let the uh, don't let the management, man. Oh, listen, don't let the role get you hyped. Like the relationships. Within these circles yeah. Has here, to be tight. Yeah. you got to keep living and eating with these guys. You got to. You know what I mean? Yeah, they and, in their penthouse somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Sure. They can we take, all getting breakfast together. Right. They can take <laughs> years off. Like, that tour when I get ready. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What we do. For sure. Yep. Yeah. And we got to create. I like the way, like, you creating all these different platforms, Rex, and you still out here doing it, but you you tapping into another thing, man. Yeah, and for I sure. commend you, man, for even having me on here. It put me with my great brother, man. Yeah, man. I'm sitting next oh, to sure. a legend and hence a new legend under me. Yeah. Swole is that dude. He really is. Oh, oh yeah. Man. How many people have toured with the level of artists he has in Chicago like him? He is that dude. Wow. He's the one guy I've, I've been to the United Center more times to see him than any other musician you. that I've <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Seriously. He'd be like, oh yeah, we doing Rihanna. Or Chris or right. Justin, T it was like ginormous, and it's not and not that it's nothing to him, but everything stays here, right? Because what happened is some guys get certain gigs or whatever yeah. the case may be, and it's yeah. like they're out the loop now, right? Now there's this big distance, this yeah, gap right. with him. It was like. Nothing changed. Yeah, we could right. be playing with Kenny for right. sure. Youth edition. Yeah, right. It's like it didn't matter. So, didn't matter, like you said, like that's a. But again, he learned a lot of that. I, from I you. got all of it from him. You know and what bro, I'm saying? We don't live in L. A., bro. Do you ever think about yeah, that? Yeah, man. We, we never moved to L. A. I moved to L. A. Twice, Reese. Well, you, yeah, you did, and but nothing happened say. both times I moved right. here. <laughs> his his blessings were here. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, that's it, when you know the favor of God is on you. People calling on you. Come do this. Yeah. 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 You don't even live there, bro. <laughs> and I know I would, me personally, I wouldn't have made it in, in L.A. Yeah. Like, God I, knew. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, even the guys that's there, some mm -hmm. of them can handle being there. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I can't. It. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. it was like, thankfully, God did bless some of us to yeah. not have to go, but yeah. he knew who to put in the position. Yeah, yeah. Some guys for him, went down there and flourished, man. Damo yeah. and man, listen. Ethan them, man. They JJ, are, man. that list they just, is so long. It's so long. Wow, it's yeah. And that's long. just bass players. That's just bass players, yeah. We're talking, you got Eric Ingram. Man, oh, yeah. He's a bad dude. Yes, we was just talking is. about you in D.C. a couple well, weeks ago. Oh, at the, yeah, yeah. He dude, was, you know he used to come to the sessions with me. I, and me? Ferris yeah, we, was, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. And he was just sitting in the corner like. Man, and that boy dog, can play Eric that bass, Hey, bro. He's perfect. He is. Oh, he dog. really is, bro. Amazing. Bro. And it, it ain't too many people that want to mm -hmm. see Eric, bro. I know, bro. He's it ain't too many people. And he's a sweetheart. That's yeah. what I love about him. He that never dude, changed. Yeah. Dope dude. He, he would make you think he just chilling. Yeah, like, for sure. What you doing? Oh, man, we playing down to yep. the Soldier Field tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. His personality's so laid back. Yeah. He's so chill. Yeah. I love it. But like like I said, man, a lot, we, majority of us look up to you. Yeah. And like you said, people may not say it, but like just for you pulling up, man. Yeah. Like, you know, like. When you call me, it don't matter where we playing. You don't have to call twice. You right. you cannot even tell me who the artist is. I'd be like, Reese, whatever we're I'm doing. There. Yeah. I'm programming the same way now that I was for you when you were staying at High Park. Right. Wow. Right. You go or in Cal, you mess it because <laughs> the energy for us we never changed. The energy don't change. Yeah, for sure. We older now, mm -hmm. but we knew who we was trying to impress mm -hmm. then. Wow. You yep. get what I'm saying? Yep. So just you being who you are and then putting what you've put into this culture, like it's appreciated on yeah, many levels. Man. Sure. And, and to hear this is sitting here today with all the stuff that I've been through in life and 
to feel appreciated and loved on. It's it's blessing me. It's wow. giving me new legs to continue it on. Yeah, you bro. I mean, like, I'm still in it. I'm still oh, doing man. it, bro. And still at the level you, it ain't like man. you took a dip. <laughs> you can still play, nigga. Oh, like, yeah, I tell you, people all the time yeah, when they yeah. ask me about mm-hmm. Reese, I was like, man, y'all don't get it twisted. That Joker can still play. <laughs> no, that ain't bass. no decline. <laughs> oh, he man, can still play bro. that bass, bro. Thank He's bro. still playing, man. Keep going, man. Like, appreciate that. Keep bro. going, bro. I don't care how old you are. You, yeah, you still Maurice Fitzgerald, nigga. Thank you, bro. Mark Miller still doing it. He old man, he everybody, hard. Stanley <laughs> Clark, all them all guys about, still doing it. Ain't none of us still. Ain't real, none of us man. gonna uh, stop getting older. Mm-hmm. Right. We can facts. definitely stay where we at. Right. We professionals. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So. Look, bro, I'm glad you came up. My boy Swole, y'all know what it is. Yeah, Mr. Man, Faith this Moves. Love. This was wonderful, man. It was. <laughs> super oh incredible. This was needed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Facts. And it was no way. Like, he didn't know mm. Swole was going to be here. Man, that touched me so much. I was like, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, bro. And that's y'all see, goal. it was times they was talking. I wasn't even here. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> if we ever do this again, there'll be times I'll pop in. And right. Oh, but, no, this was perfect, bro. Yeah, like, man. man, I love y'all brothers. Like, love you, y'all too, bro. Know what it you is. Like, love you, too. Yeah, man. So, this is another episode of the Untold. My boy Maurice Fitzgerald, Derek Swole Ray. Well, I'll let you. Wow. This is the